can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story chapter 1621, Kelp that entangles submarines. At this moment, the whole world did not know whether to laugh or cry. Japan. Damn. What kind of person is this? This fellow is such a hooligan. This program is being broadcast all over the world. Korea. How bold of him to say something like that. What sort of a Peace Prize recipient is he? The Nobel Prize Committee is probably in tears right now. India. Your grandpa. Who are you thinking of attacking? How can he speak so recklessly? This Jong fellow is too shameless. The UK. Quick, go and watch China's CTV International. What's the matter? The Peace Prize recipient is encouraging violence. Ah. China. Pfft. I'm cramping up from laughing. What a brilliant answer. Ha 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 ha. Well said, just attack them. This is indeed Zhong Yi style. Seeing Zhong Yi still behaving like the old times is really reassuring for me. I had thought at first that this fellow would start behaving cautiously after winning the Nobel Peace Prize. Who could have thought that he'd still be as reckless as ever? He said it really well. Who cares about negotiations and protests? Just get them. Attack them. The interview went viral the moment it was broadcast. It started spreading on the web. More and more people came over to watch when they heard about it. They switched over to the Central TV International Channel, wanting to see what kind of shocking words the Nobel Peace Prize laureate would say. Which of the Nobel Peace Prize recipients in history were not presidents or heads of large organizations? Which of them did not have a graceful demeanor to them and would speak prudently? So it wasn't like they had ever seen a Nobel Peace Prize recipient like that before. In this world, it wasn't only the Chinese who loved watching entertainment. Very quickly, they knew they were right in coming to see this. Because Zhong Yi was about to say something that would dumbfound people around the world. On TV. Yuin Yi hurriedly changed the subject. The three of them began conversing about the current military strategy of China. Zhong Yi drank his water and did not cut in at the beginning. Yuin Yi and Kai Shui probably did not dare to ask him any further questions in fear that this fellow would say something staggering. As such, the two of them only talked between themselves. Yuin Yi said, if a war starts, will the Yellow Sea One become a crucial spot of contention? Kai Shui said, of course it will. This is a very important location where the situation of the neighboring countries is very complicated, so the Yellow Sea will become a key strategic location to battle for. I was involved in a military project related to nuclear submarine data processing, so I know about the threat and terror they pose. Its technology has advanced greatly these days. For example, America has nuclear submarines that can sneak into the Yellow Sea without getting detected at all. Yuin Yi asked, then what weapons does China have to take on such threats at the moment? Kai Shui gave a bitter smile. According to what I know, we don't have any measures against such threats yet. And even if we do detect such threats occasionally, we don't really have a quick response to strike back. Yuin Yi said, perhaps there are some new weapon systems that haven't been announced yet? Kai Shui shook her head. I'm not in the field of weapons research, so I don't really know. She then turned to look at Zhong Yi. But fellow Zhong is in this field, so maybe he can analyze it better? Only then did Yuin Yi ask, fellow Zhong, can you give us an analysis of this? Zhong Yi smiled and said, we definitely have new weapon systems, but it's not convenient for me to talk about them. However, about the Yellow Sea. He looked at the map and pointed it out. The situation here is rather complex. If a war really does break out, China is still fully capable of finding ways to not let the enemy's nuclear subs in. Kai Shui said in surprise, what ways? Zhong Yi smiled and said, the Yellow Sea is relatively shallow, so it's very dangerous for a submarine to enter into the territory. There's no way to dive deep, and they would need to surface to be able to pass into it. Kai Shui nodded. That's true. Zhong Yi smiled and said, I'm not sure if you two have seen how they cultivate kelp in the countryside. Ah. Kai Shui was taken aback. Yuin Yi was also dumbfounded. Kelp? Zhong Yi gestured. 
Yes, kelp, in the Yellow Sea area, how do the villagers grow them? Nylon ropes this long are thrown into the sea, where the kelp slowly grow to several meters long after being planted. If we scale up the planting, without even needing to cover the entire area and planting them at several key locations in a linear fashion, which submarine can enter the area? If they dare to come in, you know what the nylon ropes with kelp will do, right? Once they get entangled with the submarine's propellers, the submarine is as good as scrap. Every submarine they send in will get sunk. There won't be a need for any strategic weapons at all. In the Yellow Sea, kelp is the most strategic weapon we can employ against the nuclear submarines. Yuingi stared blankly at him. Kaishwe nearly spat out a mouthful of blood. The entire recording studio felt silent. Kelp? Strategic weapon? Entangle the submarines? Yuingi stated, well, we have reached the end of our program today. Please join us tomorrow at the same time, and we will continue to hear about fellow Jong and fellow Kai's views on military affairs. The first episode ended. Then the entire world blew up. China. I'm gonna faint. When did kelp become a hecking strategic weapon? Ayo, I'm dying of laughter. Kelp that entangles submarines? What the heck? Only Zhong Yi would dare to raise a viewpoint like that. Misleading. This is hecking misleading. This is a military show? Military, your sister. Even kelp can become a hecking strategic weapon? I've been looking forward to hearing Zhong Yi's views on military affairs. But what is this shit about kelp? Teacher Jong, do you have to be so funny? Kneeling to face smacking Jong. America. What kind of military show is this? Kelp? Why doesn't he just die? This guy is too good at bullshitting. Japan. I have to take my hat off to him. I really have to take my hat off to him too. Can kelp really entangle a submarine? Like hell it can. You actually believed him? Korea. What the hell? Why does he dare to speak so recklessly? Don't you know Jong Yi? Whatever he says, even the punctuation marks are not to be believed. I'm cramping up with laughter. The UK. W. What kind of a military expert is he? Kelp that entangles submarines? He should go to hell. This is bullshitting on a whole new level. China's kelp industry could soon become an asset in its strategic warfare. The entire world was shocked. Kelp that entangles submarines soon became a trending phrase. The various countries' media were all rushing to report about this. But to everyone's surprise, amid the laughter of people around the world, the matter got a shocking reversal. America, China's latest weapon, kelp? Russia, would entangling a submarine with kelp really work? Canada, China's CTV International's interview attracts controversy. China, there have been similar cases of kelp entangling submarines in the past. Germany, incidents of kelp entangling submarines have happened before. Many people around the world were doubling over with laughter. A lot of them nearly passed out at this revelation, while others cursed at it. They had thought that this was pure bullshit, but surprisingly, this was refuted by the various countries' media outlets that dug up cases of similar incidents happening in the past. Entangling submarines with kelp was really a workable strategy. Countless people were horrified. Even this can be done? Damn. It really can. People around the world found themselves going crazy at this discovery. Meanwhile. Back at home. Zhong Yi's phone was exploding with calls. Yao Jinsai was on the other end of the line, laughing. Kid, are you trying to kill me with your jokes? Zhong Yi laughed and said, I was being serious, all right? That was not a joke. Soon after, General Li called. General Li said in a speechless manner, you really went all out to mislead foreigners, huh? Zhong Yi replied, didn't you ask me to feel free to mislead them? General Li was floored. I said to throw them off, not bullshit them with such outrageous claims. Actually, this isn't really misleading either. Zhong Yi smiled and said, there's a basis to it. Of course, the people of this world hadn't heard of it before. 
but back in Zhong Yi's previous world, a lot of people knew of a saying that was very popular across China, kelp that entangles submarines. Zhong Yi had also been thinking of what to say on his first appearance on a military show. What should he say? What topics would arouse the interests of everyone? As a result, he suddenly remembered the chief of the strategic Fu Yu agency in his previous world, Zhong Xiaozhong, too, and ended up bringing out his famous words onto the program. Chapter 1622, Smog That Stops Lasers In the span of a night, the phrase, kelp that entangles submarines, went viral. By the next day, products bearing this phrase started appearing in online stores. Kelp that entangles submarines totes, 10 renminbi each. Kelp that entangles submarines t-shirts, 35 renminbi per top. Kelp that entangles submarines caps, black, 15 renminbi each. Yellow sea kelp, Chinese strategic weapon, 7 renminbi per 500 grams. All kinds of products. A variety of choices. Most crucially, they were all selling very well too. Even the merchants on the streets and alleyways started hawking the same products. A lot of people were very amused by what they saw. There were also countless people sharing their purchases on Weibo. Ha 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 ha. Check out my new cap. LOL, that's so cool. I bought a bag too. That kelp that entangles submarines typeface is too eye-catching. Everyone keeps staring at me when I'm carrying it out on the streets. The double-take rate is 200%. Face-macking Jong is too damn comical. Hasn't that fellow always been this way? Ha ha. Quite a few media outlets around the world are reporting about this. He's too good at misdirection. Will the interview be on today? Yes, the second episode will be broadcast at 8 p.m. There will still be a third episode tomorrow. I'm so looking forward to it. I can't wait either. Yeah, let's see what he's going to come up with tonight. I think it will be a more serious talk today. They can't possibly keep having nonsense on a program like that. At Central TV. The International Channel. It was time to record the second episode. When Zhong Yi arrived, the program team went up and surrounded him. Fellow Zhong. The viewership ratings have totally blown up. Our domestic viewership ratings have increased by over tenfold. It's the same for our overseas viewership ratings as well. It's increased from our usual ratings by a few times. The viewership numbers for the overseas audience has broken a record. Our international channel has never seen such viewership ratings before. Everyone was very excited. The Central TV International Channel was the only international channel in China. It might sound like the channel was very important and one of a kind, but in reality, they did not get much attention as very few people watched it. Whether it was domestically or overseas, the viewership ratings had always been rather embarrassingly low. When did they ever get such a good result before? All of this was brought to them by Zhong Yi, China's one and only international celebrity. Zhong Yi himself had not expected the broadcast to attract such a great reception. Not only did it blow up in China, but it also gained the attention of the overseas audience as well. Yuingi coughed and said, You're here? Zhong Yi smiled. Yeah. Yuingi said, The clips from yesterday have already gone viral. It's also viral overseas. Zhong Yi chuckled and said, Then wouldn't you also become rather well known on the international scene? Yuingi rolled her eyes and said, I'll have you to thank for that. You're welcome, Zhong Yi said. Kai Shui came over reluctantly and sat down. Shall we start? Yuing Yi said, counting down to recording in one minute. Zhong Yi said, okay. The second episode's recording began. That same night. On the web. An American netizen, the Chinese show is starting. A Dutch netizen, it's starting, it's starting. A French netizen, this program is too funny. I didn't get to watch it yesterday, so I must have a look today. A Japanese netizen, I invited a few friends over to watch as well. I would like to see what kind of outrageous claims this Jong fellow will make today. A Korean netizen, it's starting. After yesterday's farce, a lot more people around the world who had heard about this matter from the news started tuning into the Central TV International Channel. 10 million people. 20 million people. 
30 million people. The overseas viewership numbers continued to soar. There were even people from the various countries' media outlets and their military personnel watching. This was the first time that a Chinese program had attracted such attention overseas. On TV. The show had already started. Yuini smiled and said, Good evening, everyone. We meet again. Welcome to Central TV International Channel's Army Day Special. I am your host, Yuini. I am Kai Shui. I am Zhong Yi. Both of them also looked into the camera and greeted the global audience. Yesterday, when we talked about the nuclear submarine threat, fellow Zhong suggested a plan that caused a heated debate and questioning by people around the world. Actually, I know what fellow Zhong meant to say was that victory in war does not depend on who has the more advanced technology or weapons. A battle is determined by a comprehensive mix of factors, and there are a lot of variables and tactics involved. Even an ordinary thing like kelp might stop a nuclear submarine's advance. Hence, we can say that no matter how advanced a weapon system is, it will still not determine the outcome of a battle. Zhong Yi nodded. That's right. Yuini asked, what is fellow Kai's view on this? Kai Shui shook her head and said, I only agree partially with this opinion. I have a different view on the other portion of it. Technology, arms, and weapons determine the military strength of a country. I am a scientist, so what matters more to me is data. Against certain strategic weapons, battlefield tactics don't mean much at all. For example, a guided missile's range is only so long. It will either hit its target or not. That's all there is to it. Zhong Yi smiled but did not say anything. Yu Yi said, I heard that a country has already developed laser weaponry. Kai Shui acknowledged, yes, and that's indeed a very real threat. Yu Yi said, is there a way we can handle it then? Kai Shui said without thinking, no, and it's not only us who can't handle it. Right now in the world, no country has the capability to deal with laser weaponry. We can intercept guided missiles, we can fend off aircraft carriers, but we can't do anything about lasers. This is a very powerful weapon we have no answer for. No technology yet exists to stop such tactics. Zhong Yi spoke up, that's being too absolute. Kai Shui said helplessly, it's not being absolute, rather we really have no way to handle it. Laser weaponry are not invincible, Zhong Yi said bluntly. He was starting to stir up Kai Shui. Oh. So being unstoppable doesn't mean it's invincible? Zhong Yi laughed. Who says it's unstoppable? Yu Yi said in surprise. Ah. There's a way. Kai Shui rolled her eyes. That's impossible. No country has the means to deal with it. Zhong Yi said calmly, but China does. China said startled, China does? Then Zhong Yi said something astonishing. He said, smog can stop lasers. Silence. Dead silence. It was all quiet in the recording studio and in front of the televisions. Smog? Stopping lasers? Kai Shui vomited blood. Ah. Zhong Yi looked at the shocked Yuini and Kai Shui and smiled. Laser weaponry is very powerful, but they also have their weaknesses. Furthermore, this weakness is very obvious. Fellow Kai should know quite well that conventional weapons cannot stop lasers, but what about smog? The largest diameter of a smog particle is 80 microns, with the majority of them between 1 micron and 10 microns. A laser wavelength is smaller than 1000 nanometers, which is 1 micron, so it will be difficult for a laser to bypass these smog particles. Yuini didn't understand at all. But Kai Shui was dumbfounded. That, Zhong Yi said, a lot of metal particles exists in a smog. If we magnified them, they would all be metallic balls. Once the smog reaches a certain density, tell me, how will the laser weaponry penetrate it? All right, even if it does manage to penetrate it in the end, the original range of over 10 kilometers would have now shortened to less than a kilometer. It wouldn't be able to hit anyone or touch any targets. With its intended target so far away, tell me what use would laser weaponry be then? Kai Shui was speechless. The audience watching TV was speechless. Yuini was truly shocked. The smog even has such an effect. 
Zhong Yi said indifferently, I'm not saying that the smog is good. I've even made a documentary called Under the Dome, though I'm not sure if you two have watched it before. I am purely analyzing the effects of the smog from a military and scientific perspective and saying that the smog can stop a laser attack. In fact, it can even stop guided missiles from reaching its intended targets. He said something astonishing again. Damn. It can even stop guided missiles? Yuing Yi said in shock, how would it stop that? Zhong Yi said, currently, the majority of the world's guided missiles are guided visually, with lasers, through infrared imaging, or using GPS. The first two types of guided missiles are more affected by smoggy environments. Smog, for example, can make visual guided and laser guided missiles less effective in combat. Although they can still be launched, the hit rate is not high. Of the the visually guided missiles have a similarity to optical reconnaissance radar. It requires an operator to see the target before they can aim, lock on, and execute the attack. If this happens in a smoggy environment, they can't lock onto the target if they can't see it. In that case, they can't hit it. Kai Shui said in a speechless manner, Fellow Zhong, according to what you say, wouldn't the smog also be able to prevent paratroopers from landing? Zhong Yi solemnly nodded in agreement. Of course it can. Smog can indeed prevent paratroopers from landing. Without being able to see their ground target, how would the paratroopers be able to parachute down? Isn't that obvious? Kai Shui was floored. Yuini was also looking truly dumbfounded. The second episode of the interview ended. However, the outside world was already blowing up again. China. On Weibo. The smog can stop guided missiles? The smog can stop lasers? The smog can stop paratroopers? Stop your sister. Misleading. This is hecking misleading. Ha 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 ha. Ayo, I'm dying of laughter. I can't take it anymore. Face smacking Jong just doesn't hecking give up on saying astonishing things. Fellow Kai has been totally confused by him. This fellow is too good at bullshitting. Yesterday, he claimed that kelp can be turned into a strategic weapon. Today, he's hecking saying that smog can also become a strategic weapon. Teacher Jong, enough. This is really enough. I'm not convinced by anyone other than Zhong Yi. How can he be so comical? On the web. Oh my god. Smog? Just what is he thinking? W would this really work? Scientifically speaking, it really seems plausible. Asterisk faints asterisk, that's clearly nonsense. Do you guys really believe him? This is even more ridiculous than submarines getting entangled by kelp. This guy even calls himself a military expert? This is the most misleading military expert in history. I'll admit it. This Chinese guy has really succeeded. He has succeeded in bringing me such joy. Ha 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 ha. In the future, I will really not trust anything that a Chinese person says. The whole world was in heated discussions. The whole world was laughing hard at this. On this day, another phrase went viral. Smog that stops lasers. Chapter 1623, Meteorites that destroy carriers. The next day. In the morning. At a U.S. Department of Defense press conference. The press conference was being held to answer questions on the recent public concerns about defense budget overspending and weapons exports. But before they could even answer a few questions, a female reporter from one of the well-known American media outlets raised her hand and stood up to ask a question. The female reporter asked, is America's latest laser weaponry really ineffective against a smog-ridden China? The DoD official was clearly taken back. Huh? The female reporter asked again, is China's kelp really the nemesis of our nuclear submarines? The DoD official was stunned. What? The female reporter raised yet another question. With China so smoggy, can our paratroopers parachute onto the mainland? Smog? Kelp? Parachute? The entire venue was quiet. The reporters at the press conference were speechless. The American people were speechless. People around the world were speechless. 
In the end, that Dodd official did not answer the female reporter's questions during the live broadcast. This was because he did not know how to answer her. He probably had not seen the interview on the Central TV International Channel. However, from the laughter of the reporters present, it could be seen that many of them knew what this was about. The program that Zhong Yi was on had attracted a lot of discussion in many countries around the world. Some people thought that he was talking nonsense, but others felt that Zhong Yi's claims were reasonable. Whether it was the smog or kelp, they all had a scientific basis to them. This was also why a lot of people didn't know what to do. Because even though they knew this guy was hecking bullshitting, there was no way they could refute his nonsense. In China, the online stores were selling their products like hotcakes again. Smog that stops lasers, cup, smog that stops guided missiles, cell phone case, smog that stops paratroopers, mask, and so on and so forth. All of these products were sold out. On Weibo. I've had such a good laugh these past two days. Me too, the entire world has been tickled funny by Zhong Yi. The funniest thing to happen was the DOD's press conference. Did anyone see it? Ha 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 ha, I watched that. Zhong Yi's bullshit has arrived in America. They really took it seriously. The US DOD officials were probably stunned by those questions. That's right, these new strategic weapons have all been made kaput by face smacking Zhong with a single sentence. This guy's bullshitting skills are astonishing. There's still another episode tonight. Right, it's the final episode. I'm really anticipating it. Let's see what he will say today. Ha ha ha. I love John Yi. I love him too. This fellow is always able to bring laughter to people. In the morning. At Central TV. John Yi was on the phone with General Lee, as I was saying, Professor Zhong. What is it, old Lee? It's the last episode. Can you stop fooling around? I wasn't fooling around. Can't you be more serious at the appropriate times? I've always been serious. A distance away, the Central TV International Channel staff were all exuberant. This was due to the fact that their viewership ratings achieved yet another high. It was so high that it was shocking. Domestically. Abroad. The viewership ratings had exploded. Actually, in China, a lot of people just treated this as a passing matter that amused them. They did not care about what Zhong Yi said, nor if his methods were feasible. They only knew that due to the Zhong Yi effect, the world was becoming more and more receptive towards China. This was something that no celebrity in the history of China had achieved before, as even the US Dodd had been confused by Zhong Yi's claims. Who else could do something like that? That same night. The show started. Parties gathered from all over. The entire world was watching. At John Yi's parents' house. His father said, it's on. His mother said angrily, if this kid spouts nonsense again today, I'll beat him to death. His father also felt somewhat helpless. At Spring Garden's place. It's starting, it's starting. Ha 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 ha, it's finally beginning. Let's see what strategic weapons will fall to Zhong Yi's claims today. At Zhong Yi's studio. I really have to take my hat off to Director Zhong. Director Zhong has been pushed into the global limelight these few days. It's a good thing. Our popularity is going to grow again. India. It's starting. Let's see how this fellow is going to bullshit today. Who cares about submarines and lasers? The greatest combat strength in the world is the aircraft carrier. Yeah, build an aircraft carrier if you're so capable. America. Nothing the Chinese say makes any sense. That's right. As long as we have aircraft carriers, any theories they come up with are hogwash. The Chinese do not have any aircraft carriers yet, right? On TV. Yu Yingyi had put on a heavier makeup today. While Kai Shui who hardly put on any makeup usually was requested by the program team to dress up a little more. This was because they knew that it wasn't just the locals who were watching CTV International. The overseas viewership numbers had exploded to a new high. Therefore, just by sitting there, they were responsible for portraying the image of China. Of course, Zhong Yi still kept to his usual look. He didn't put any makeup on, and he was still dressed in those clothes. 
he rarely bothered about his appearance. However, in the current situation, this fellow probably did not have much of an image to speak of anyway. John Yi. Bullshit King. These two words had been associated with him by many of the audience members, both at home and abroad. Yuing Yi smiled and said, Welcome to this episode of our Army Day special. We meet again. I read some news this morning about the USDOD's press conference that took place recently. Did you hear about it, fellow Kai? Kai Shui gave a wry smile. I saw it too. Yuing Yi laughed and said, Fellow Zhong's battle tactics have astonished a lot of people and many netizens around the world are debating about them. Fellow Zhong, what is your opinion on this? Zhong Yi said nonchalantly, it's good to debate over such things. Being involved in the military and weapons development, there are times when we cannot just confine ourselves to technology. A battle can be fought in many ways. I am only offering everyone something to think about. Some might agree, while others would disagree. All of this is to be expected. Kai Shui shook her head. I think I still have my reservations regarding fellow Zhong's conjectures. Yuing Yi said, looks like fellow Kai and fellow Zhong's debate will continue today. Kai Shui nodded. That's right, I still insist on sticking with technology. Zhong Yi said, it's not wrong to stick with technology, but there are times when it would take time to catch up with technology. Let me offer you an example. Take for example that China has been embroiled in a war and our technology is as is. The weapons and equipment that we have are just what we have, with only that many fighter jets and tanks available. How will we fight the war? How are we going to use the existing weapons to effectively attack the enemy? I think this is what we have to consider. Kai Shui said, these words are quite sensible. Yuing Yi said, speaking of war, there is a term that we cannot avoid, aircraft carriers. Kai Shui acknowledged her and said, we still can't build our own aircraft carriers at the moment. This is where there is a difference in technology levels and we have to admit it. Yuing Yi said, an expert once said, whoever has aircraft carriers shall rule the world. Kai Shui said, in modern warfare, under the circumstances of not resorting to nuclear weapons, I agree with that statement. Yuing Yi asked, what about fellow Zhong? Zhong Yi smiled. I disagree. Kai Shui started bickering with him again. I also would like to see our Chinese military growing stronger and have the most advanced weapons in the world. But based on our current technology, we still can't do that. There's no way to avoid the issue that our weakness is in not having any aircraft carriers. I also know that our military has been sparing no efforts in this area of research. I didn't have a chance to participate in this project, but I believe fellow Zhong should have, right? You definitely know how important an aircraft carrier is to a country's military. Zhong Yi said, an aircraft carrier is indeed very important, but it is not invincible. It can still get blown up. But Kai Shui said, how would it get blown up? With guided missiles and bombing? But have you considered the presence of the carrier's destroyer escort? Do you think they're there on a sightseeing tour? There are jamming systems, interceptor missiles, and a large array of defense systems aboard an aircraft carrier, and this is not taking into account the aircraft on the carrier yet. If an aircraft carrier is so easily sunk, it wouldn't be called an aircraft carrier. Zhong Yi shook his head. I feel that you have deified the aircraft carrier. Kai Shui said in annoyance, what ways do you have to deal with them? Yuing Yi had a bad feeling about this. Fellow Zhong has thought up another new strategy? Zhong Yi thought about it for a moment before saying, of course I have. Kai Shui wasn't convinced. What method do you have? Zhong Yi said shockingly, meteorites. In this moment. In this instant. The world fell silent again. Countless people around the world felt their jaws drop. No one could have expected this fellow to blurt out something like that. Yuing Yi said in a stunned manner, M. Meteorites. Zhong Yi continued, it is the nemesis of an aircraft carrier. For example, I'll provide a train of thought here. We can create a massive meteor shower to do it. But how do we create something like that? We can use rockets to transport a large number of rocks or similar materials into space. Then, with great planning, we can determine the direction that the aircraft carrier is traveling in to determine the target's location. 
by detonating the rocket, we can create a dense meteor shower that will strike a devastating blow to the aircraft carrier and its aircraft. Kai Shui said in shock, impossible. Zhong Yi smiled and asked, why is it impossible? What are meteors? They're just rocks. Its biggest advantage lies in the fact that it is not a guided missile and does not react to electromagnetism. So what if the aircraft carrier deploys its jamming systems? An EMP? Go ahead and try. They're just rocks, so how are you going to jam them? If they send out their destroyers to intercept the attack? Those are rocks, hundreds of thousands of rocks. Try intercepting those. Even if you can intercept 10 or a 100, could you intercept 10,000? A 100,000? In the face of a meteor shower, what is the use of technology? It's basically useless. Kai Shui said, this, Yu Yi said, does a meteor shower have such power? Zhong Yi said, of course it does. When the rocks fall, they do so at speeds of Mach 10 to Mach 30. What does that mean? It means that even if an egg-sized rock were to fall down to earth, it would penetrate a 15 to 20 cm thick steel plate. He gestured with his hands. What would that mean for an aircraft carrier? Even if just five rocks were to hit the carrier, it would immediately sink. Chapter 1624, China's Spiritual Military Strategist On the web. Countless netizens from countries all over the world were criticizing like crazy. A Japanese netizen, that Chinese guy is so full of bullshit. A Korean netizen, he really dares to talk big. Even an aircraft carrier is unable to escape his viciousness. An Indian netizen, meteorites that destroy carriers? Why don't you just die? A French netizen, after the nuclear submarines and laser weaponry, aircraft carriers have now been given the death sentence by the Chinese as well. An English netizen, I can't stand to look at the tactics that the Chinese come up with. They're so powerful that even a carrier is not a threat to China anymore. A German netizen, asterisk faints asterisk, a Canadian netizen, I'm hecking kneeling to China. A Pakistani netizen, how impressive, my Chinese bro. You're all so powerful. An American netizen, based on your arguments, nuclear submarines would not be able to enter your waters because of the kelp, the smog would prevent laser weaponry from hitting you, affect the visualizations of guided missiles and prevent paratroopers from parachuting down. And now, even aircraft carriers have become paper tigers? Using a meteor shower to destroy them? Heck you! Doesn't that make China invincible to the entire world? Who else could beat you that way? A Russian netizen, ha 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 ha. A Dutch netizen, Zhong Yi, China's spiritual military strategist. A Pakistani netizen, how impressive, my Chinese bro. I'm so proud of you all. An Egyptian netizen, there's no one who can stop the rise of China. An Australian netizen, this is the first time I've seen a military expert who can speak so well. An Italian netizen, that's right, I actually thought that what he said was very reasonable, even if I know that he's just bullshitting. A Brazilian netizen, I had thought that the Indians were the best at talking big, but it looks to me that they're nowhere near Zhong Yi. Countless Indian netizens scolded, get lost. A Chinese netizen, you guys know too little about teacher Zhong, so here's an introduction of him again. He is China's most amazing celebrity whose ability entirely hinges on his mouth. He's someone who can even play soccer and dribble the ball with his mouth alone. So you guys should be glad that this program only ran for three episodes. If it were 30 episodes long, all of the world's weapon systems would get taken apart by face-smacking Zhong's mouth. Not a single one of them would make it out intact. The Pakistani netizen, how impressive, my Chinese bro. You guys are so impressive. The American netizen was speechless. America. Japan. Korea. Russia. The UK. The entire world was criticizing Zhong Yi. Only the Pakistani brethren gave him their full support. On the same night. In the international news. China's television program gets the attention of many. China's latest military strategies? An aircraft carrier or a paper tiger? China's battle tactics shocked the world. Seven American-linked OEMs won withdraw from China. What is the reason for this? 
Is America's reason for withdrawing its OEM factories to help reduce China's smog? At John Yi Studio. After recording the episode at the Central TV International Channel in the morning, John Yi spent the rest of the day at the studio where he and his studio staff watched the show together. When it ended, they went online to have a look, only to discover the web filled with complaints about him. He chuckled but did not take it seriously. Little Wang sprawled out on a table. Ha 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 ha. Ha Chichi burst out laughing as well. How long are you going to laugh? Little Wang clutched her belly. Ayo, I can't take it anymore. Let me laugh a little while more. Tong Fu laughed until he cried after seeing the comments left by the world's netizens and reading the international news. Director Zhong is amazing. Director Zhong's eloquence is unmatched in the world. Foot, ha 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 ha. I was really tickled today. Yeah, I nearly died laughing over the past three days. We're gonna get really popular again. There was laughter all around the studio. At this moment, Zhong Yi received quite a few calls on his cell phone from his family and friends. His mother. His eldest younger sister. His mother-in-law. Yao Jiantsai. Ning Lan. Zhong Xia. And so on and so forth. His phone was blowing up with calls from everyone. It was at this moment that something major occurred. It was a totally unexpected incident that nearly made everyone vomit blood. Ha Chichi was looking at the news when she suddenly shouted, Ah! Quiet! Everyone, quiet down! Jongs were jogged over. What is it, old Ha? Little Wang stopped laughing. What happened this time? Ha Chichi spun around and looked at them. This year's Global Military Rankings Index 2 has just been published. So what if it's published? Zhong Yi said indifferently, What's the big deal? Ha Chichi said in astonishment, China's military is ranked second in the world. The studio fell silent. Zhong Yi eyes widened. Little Wang was stunned. Tong Fu was so shocked that his legs turned to rubber. What? Second? This is impossible. H Haven T we always been in third place? We've surpassed Russia? Holy shit! This, this, at the next moment, all of the studio staff turned to look at Zhong Yi in unison. Zhong Yi nearly fainted. Damn, what are you all looking at me for? What the heck has this got to do with me? It was a coincidence, a hecking coincidence that this year's global military rankings had to, unfortunately, be published at this time. Further, perhaps due to the decommissioning of Russia's only aircraft carrier, it had caused Russia's military ranking to slide and be overtaken by China for the first time. Logically speaking, this should be quite normal. But somehow, it just had to happen at such a critical point in time. Of course Zhong Yi knew it had nothing to do with him, and the studio staff also knew that it had nothing to do with him either. But this was not what the people thought. It was not what the world's netizens thought either. Therefore, when the military rankings were published, the entire world blew up. India. What? China is in second place? Heck. 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 Japan. Oh my god. Zhong Yi has brought China to second place in the world with his big talk. Th this doesn't hecking make any sense at all. Korea. What does China have? How can they possibly be second? Comparing their military, and the number of nuclear submarines they have, Russia has nearly double of what China has. China only has how many subs? But China has kelp. Ah. The UK. Heavens. The Chinese are defying the heavens. China's spiritual military strategist has somehow pushed China into second place with his big talk. Russia must be crying. Their military strength is not inferior to China's. It's even more painful that they lost due to that mouth of Zhong Yi's. America. I'm gonna break down. How can it even be like this? Bullshitting can increase the ranking of a military too? If Zhong Yi recorded a few more episodes of the show, China would probably overtake America and become the world's leading military power. It would just be a matter of time. China. Ha 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 ha. I'm dying of laughter. 
I'm really dying of laughter. Face macking Jong is so fearsome. That mouth of his is too fearsome. Kelp, smog, meteorites, these three nuclear weapons of China have pushed China into second place in the world. The world's leading military duper, Zhong Yi. This rankings index doesn't make sense at all. We should have already overtaken America and be ranked first. With a single face smacking Zhong, we can hecking take on 10 of their aircraft carriers. Pfft. That's enough, all right. Teacher Zhong is gonna get mocked beyond recognition soon. Ha 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 ha. The Chinese military. Several of the generals were on the verge of a mental breakdown. This can even hecking happen? It shouldn't have anything to do with Zhong Yi, right? Even if we say that it has nothing to do with him, no one will believe it. This fellow is too good at inciting controversy. China was stunned. The world was shocked. Countless citizens around the world were in stitches. Zhong Yi's cell phone was blowing up with calls again. Wave after wave of family and friends were calling. Yao Jiantsai was laughing like crazy on the other end of the line. Ha 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 ha. Don't stop doing the show. Keep going at it. Whether China can ascend to the top of the military world rankings is all up to you now. Zhong Yi chided him with a laugh. Get lost. Right now, Zhong Yi was a little confused. Of course he knew that he didn't have a talent for military affairs. All of what he had said was just nonsense and only done for the program's effect. He was still putting entertainment as his main priority, so he didn't expect that the matter would get blown up so big. China has realized its dream of becoming a superpower. China reaches second place on the Global Military Rankings Index for the first time. Zhong Yi's divine assist. China's second place was all down to misleading claims. The media also joined in the buzz. Zhong Yuanqi had briefly stepped onto the international stage before, and other Chinese celebrities had also appeared on the international celebrity rankings before. Without an exception, their first task after breaking onto the international stage was to take on film projects, or release an English song in order to stabilize their positions on the international rankings. Although they had all failed in the end, and no one managed to gain a foothold, one could tell just how much they valued their position on the international celebrity rankings. The first assignment after stepping onto the international stage was an extremely important one. A lot of people also thought that Zhong Yi would attach great importance to this. But in the end, it was the complete opposite. The first task that Zhong Yi did after getting onto the international celebrity rankings was to talk. Bull. Shit. He did so to an earth-shattering effect. He bullshitted until the world was stunned. To be able to bullshit to such an effect? Throughout the ages, only one person had succeeded. On this day, Zhong Yi's name once again resounded throughout the world. On this day, Zhong Yi had truly gained a foothold on the international stage for the first time. Moreover, he also gained a new nickname. The Spiritual Military Strategist of the Global Military Career Field. Chapter 1625, Rising in Rank on the International Celebrity Rankings Index. The next day. The outside world was still in disarray. At this moment, the International Celebrity Rankings Index was suddenly refreshed. On the web, the celebrity rankings have been updated. Are there any changes? There are. Wow, the French celebrities are going very strong. But the popular stars are still the American celebrities. An American celebrity has advanced a spot again. It's another newcomer yet again. The competition is too intense. What about that Chinese? Ah, that Chinese celebrity is coming up too. What? In the latest rankings index, the rankings of the international celebrities had changed yet again. An international B-list celebrity's popularity dropped, and he was downgraded to the international C-list rankings, while the top international C-lister was promoted to the B-list. Two international A-listers kept swapping places as well. Furthermore, many people around the world also noticed that the ranking of the Chinese celebrity who had caused such a great commotion in recent days had moved as well. International C-list rankings, Zhong Yi, China. C-list ranking, number 59. His previous international ranking was only number 67 on the C-list. 
After this recent incident, he had shot up by eight places. There were only a 100 celebrities on the C-list rankings. Being ranked around 50th meant that Zhong Yi was truly considered a middle-tier C-lister. To note, the international celebrity rankings were similar to the Chinese celebrity rankings. This meant that the upper ranks would require a higher popularity score to reach, almost to the point of exponentially doubling as it went further up. From this, it could be seen that the rise in China's military ranking, and Zhong Yi's spiritual battle strategies had a great impact on his international fame and popularity. Many of the world's netizens were amazed. Incredible! The Chinese celebrity has affirmed his position. You can even increase your popularity by bullshitting? Who was it that said the Chinese celebrity couldn't go far in the international celebrity rankings? He's reached the middle of the C list. It was an Indian who said that. What a dark horse he is. With just his mouth alone, he forcefully increased China's global military ranking from third place to second place. He deserves all this popularity. This is such an unorthodox celebrity. Impressive, my Chinese bro. I'm proud of you. The Japanese people rolled their eyes. The Indian people were scolding and cursing. The American people were speechless. The Chinese people were poking fun. Only the Pakistani brethren behaved as always. In China. Noon. John Yi's house. I'm smiling proudly. I'm smiling proudly one. In the house, John Yi was humming and singing. Ring ring ring, ring ring ring. The phone rang continuously. John Yi couldn't answer it as he was preparing lunch in the kitchen. He said to Cece, dear, help daddy to answer the phone. Tell them I'm busy. Cece clumsily picked up the phone. Hello, Jonga, congratulations. Hello? A? It's Cece? MHM. Where's your daddy? Daddy is making lunch for mommy. Ha ha, your daddy is such a good husband. This is Auntie Shan Shan. Tell your daddy that our old classmates are all congratulating him again on his rising international popularity. Okay, Auntie Shan Shan. Come to Auntie's house to play when you have time. Have you worn the clothes that I bought for you the last time? Yes. Mommy says it's very pretty. John Yi overheard part of the conversation and said smilingly to his daughter from afar, Thank your Auntie Shan Shan. Tell her not to buy so many clothes in the future. If she really wants to, just gift money instead. Cece replied in a childish voice, Thank you, Auntie Shan Shan. On the other end of the line, Dong Shan Shan laughed. She clearly heard what Zhong Yi had said. You're welcome. Tell your daddy to stay out of this. The call ended. Cece went over to pass the message to her father. Auntie Shan Shan says congratulations to daddy. Zhong Yi more and less knew it was a congratulatory call as he had also seen the latest international celebrity rankings. This was the thing that he had been waiting for today. Zhong Yi had not expected that his international popularity would surge by so much. He was so happy that he even started humming a tune as he prepared lunch. Working on the show for the past few days. And bringing out the chief of the strategic full U agency. Wasn't all of that just for this little bit of international popularity? Some people had thought that Zhong Yi's first assignment after reaching the international stage was decided a little too hastily, but now, no one was saying such a thing. This was because everyone knew very clearly that the job he had chosen was actually perfect for him. It was an assignment that only Zhong Yi could handle. No one could imitate him. How could they? Could international superstar Lillian start talking nonsense on a program like that? No one would accept it if it were any of the other international celebrities who did something like that. Only Zhong Yi was an exception. They could all accept this fellow who had tripped an Indian writer at the Nobel Prize award ceremony, and still brazenly called for world peace to bullshit like he did on the program. From a certain perspective, this was a demeanor that only Zhong Yi exuded. This demeanor wasn't found on any of the other international celebrities. Lunch was prepared. It was packed into an insulated lunchbox. Cece, let's go. We're going to bring lunch to mommy. Okay. The father-daughter pair got in the car and headed straight for the central publicity department. 
at Old Wu's workplace. When Zhong Yi entered the compound, there was a huge reaction. Quite a few people working at the central publicity department crowded over in surprise. Ayo, if it isn't Teacher Zhong? What is Teacher Zhong doing here? Sending lunch to Minister Wu. Ayo, Cece has grown taller again. She's getting prettier and prettier. Fellow Zhong, congratulations on your rising international popularity. You've really done us Chinese people proud. Zhong Yi also chatted a little with everyone. At this moment, Wu Ziqing and another deputy minister came out of the office building. They were talking as they headed in the direction of what seemed to be the cafeteria. It was lunchtime, after all. That deputy minister immediately spotted Zhong Yi. He said with a smile, your husband is here. Wu Ziqing smiled. What are you doing here? Zhong Yi said, I brought you lunch. I just made. Mommy, mommy. Cece ran over excitedly. Wu Ziqing picked her up dotingly. You're such a good girl? Bringing lunch to mommy? Cece nodded enthusiastically. Daddy said that the food at the cafeteria here isn't tasty. The deputy minister beside them smiled and said, No? I think it's pretty good. Then Zhong Yi said, About that, Minister He, don't mind me saying this. This is a pretty big organization. Surely there can be more varieties of food being served? It's always those few dishes getting rotated through the menu, and they're not easily digested food either. My wife has been suffering from some stomach discomfort lately and gets gastric reflux at night. She's only been eating from the cafeteria here. Minister He didn't get angry. He smiled and said, sure, I'll speak with the cafeteria management later and get them to change the menu from tomorrow onwards. Minister Wu will surely enjoy the food tomorrow. When a nearby employee heard, he smiled and said, I'll go and let them know immediately. Zhong Yi instructed, make sure they add more greens. The employee said, sure. Everyone laughed. All across the country, which official's family at the central publicity department would dare to speak in such a way? Only Zhong Yi dared to do this. This was because Zhong Yi wasn't just the family of an official, he was also China's first Nobel Prize laureate and a two academies research fellow who had won China's highest science and technology award. He wouldn't go as far as to direct their work, but complaining a little about the food here and getting the canteen to tweak the menu was still something that everyone here would listen to and follow. Chapter 1626, The Practical Usage of Spiritual Tactics Wu Ziqing's Office Mommy, Cece is hungry. You two haven't eaten either? MHM Let's quickly eat lunch then. Daddy, I don't want to eat these carrots. That won't do. Carrots are full of nutrition. Eat them. Okay. Ha ha, how is daddy's cooking? Daddy's cooking is delicious. Old Wu, how does it taste? Um, it's quite delicious, ha ha. Usually, it was either Wu Ziqing or Zhong Yi who would work overtime at the office. That left the family of three with very few opportunities to eat together, so Zhong Yi did not like to be disturbed whenever they could eat together. However, after only taking a few bites, someone knocked on the door. Wu Ziqing called out while eating, Come in. Secretary CI entered. Minister Wu, the people from the Supreme Court are here. For people walked through the door. Wu Ziqing smiled. Old Qian, you're this early? Old Qian was startled. Oh, you're having lunch? Yes, my husband brought me lunch, Wu Ziqing said with a smile. Old Qian looked at Zhong Yi and Cici with a smile. Teacher Zhong, you're around too? I suppose we arrived at the wrong time. Sorry to disturb your lunch. Wu Ziqing stood up and tidied up a little. It's fine. Come, let's head to the conference room to speak. But Zhong Yi wasn't having any of that. He frowned and said, but we just started eating. Wu Ziqing smiled and said, I'll eat after I'm done here. Zhong Yi said, you haven't eaten all day. Can you bear it if you get gastric reflux afterwards? Cece also tugged at her mother's sleeve. Mommy, eat. Mommy, eat. The people from the Supreme Court hurriedly said, that's right, that's right. Teacher Zhong is right. Eating is more important. 
In the end, it was still the leader of the group, Old Chien, who said with a smile, why don't we just have the meeting here? We can discuss the matter while you eat. Zhang Yi stood up and said, all right, you all go ahead. I'll head outside to eat. There's no need. Old Chien said happily, Teacher Zhang, you're not an outsider. You're also one of us legal professionals, after all. When the other Supreme Court people heard that, they realized it as well. Zhang Yi was a legend among legal professionals. In the history of the judicial examination, he was the only person to have gotten a perfect score on it. Others might not know about the difficulty of the judicial examination because they had never taken it before. But these people here were different. They had all gone through the judicial examination before, so of course they knew what that meant. As such, they were all in awe of Zhong Yi's perfect score achievement. The meeting began. As Old Wu discussed some matters with them, Zhong Yi and Cici stayed out of the way and ate their lunch. Listening to their conversation, Zhong Yi formed an idea of what they were talking about. The Supreme Court's people had come over the matter of some deadbeats. What was a deadbeat? To put it simply, they were people who legally owed money. However, these people would avoid paying their debts even though they had the money to do so. This time, there were orders given from above to crack down on such behavior. As such, the Supreme Court's people came knocking on the Central Publicity Department's door in hopes of finding some practical ways to deal with this dishonest behavior and make them pay up, rather than pursuing them through the usual legal court notices. Five minutes. 10 minutes. They couldn't settle on a solution even after discussing for a long time. Wu Ziqing said, what I can do on our side is to contact the newspapers, media outlets, and even Central TV and People's Daily to help publish a debtor's list. Old Qian sighed. We've also tried those ways before, but the results weren't that great. The main issue is that not enough publicity is generated this way. If we were to publish the debtor's personal information in greater detail, their privacy will be infringed, and that's not a line we're allowed to cross. Therefore, these are the difficulties that we face, and they're not easy to deal with. Wu Ziqing asked, how many people are there on the list? Next to them, a female cadre of the Supreme Court said, the list of such debtors has a total of 175 names. Wu Ziqing acknowledged her. That's quite a lot of them. Something came over old Qian as he looked at Zhong Yi, who happened to be scooping up some food for his child. He blinked and said, Teacher Zhong, do you have any suggestions? Zhong Yi was taken aback. Ah? The four people of the Supreme Court asked, Yeah, why don't you suggest some ideas? This matter is too difficult to deal with. You are resourceful with lots of ideas and tactics. When they heard the word, tactics, the people in the room couldn't help laughing. Zhong Yi said in amusement, my tactics are basically just me blowing hot air. Old Qian slapped his thigh. Even so, we're open to hearing them. Zhong Yi looked at his wife. I'm only a family member here. Is it really appropriate for me to take part in this discussion? You're not any ordinary family member. Old Qian paused for a moment before saying, you're also a legal professional. When it comes to defeating these deadbeats, it's better to come together and brainstorm. Zhong Yi nodded. All right, I'll say a few words then. This situation that you mentioned is quite tricky, but at the same time, it is very simple as well. He remembered the many effective ways that the people in his previous world had implemented to deal with such deadbeats. Aren't they just refusing to pay up? Then you don't have to be courteous with them. If they want to act shamelessly, then you gotta be even more shameless than them. If they wanna be thick-skinned, then you gotta be even more thick-skinned than them. The Supreme Court's people said, ah? Compete on shamelessness? Compete on being thick-skinned? W what kind of underhanded strategy is that? Zhong Yi said, how about this? You guys contact the relevant mobile telecommunications companies and get them to attach a customized incoming ringtone to the cell phone numbers of those deadbeats. Whenever someone calls them, a recorded message from the Supreme Court will play before the call connects. It can go like, the person you are calling has been identified as a debtor by the Supreme People's Court. Kindly urge the individual to fulfill their obligations under the legal documents as soon as possible, or something similar to that. 
this will let them know that the person they're calling is a deadbeat. The roomful of people were amazed. Damn. This is indeed such a hecking spiritual tactic. This tactic is too wicked. Old Qian wiped at his sweat and said, W will this work? Wu Ziqing laughed. I think that it makes some sense to do it this way. Th then let's give it a try. Old Qian said. Zhong Yi lowered his head and continued eating. Go on, it definitely won't be a problem. Submission to the courts. Getting the approval. On the very same afternoon, the document was issued. At a construction company. Sun He was in his office smoking a cigar and waiting for a very important call. His wife smiled and said, has the project been confirmed? Sun He laughed and said, the discussions are complete and we'll be signing the contract very soon. His wife said excitedly, this is a project worth tens of millions of yuan. There's a lot of money to be earned from it. Ring, ring, ring. Sun His cell phone rang. Sun He took a deep breath. Ha ha, here it comes. But when he answered the phone, he was dumbfounded. The CEO on the other end of the line said angrily, Old son, what's with you? Son he said in surprise, Boss Zhong? What's the matter? The CEO said, So you're actually a deadbeat? Let's forget about the project. I'll go and speak to another company and work with them instead. You, hi, you better act appropriately. Son he was panicking. Boss Zhong. Don't. Boss Zhong. His wife panicked. What happened? How does Boss Zhong know? After a while, they finally understood what was going on. When Sun He picked up the office telephone to call himself on his cell phone and heard the pre recorded message from the court, his face turned green with anger. An angry roar rang out from within the office. Heck, your sister. Whose rotten idea was this? Inside a luxury sedan. Two people were in the middle of a conversation. Have you changed the registered owner of the car yet? Yes, it's under my younger brother's name now. Haha, <laughs> that's good. Those people from the courts are too annoying. Yeah, they keep coming in person to look for me. Don't they know that they're really irritating? At this moment, a call from his parents' house arrived. The man hurriedly answered and said respectfully, Mom. On the other end of the line, his mother did not say anything for a long time. The man wondered, Mom, what is it? His mother said coldly, Little foo, do you owe people money? The man said dumbfoundedly, No, Mom, who told you something like that? His mother said, Tell me the truth. The man said, I really don't. His mother lamented, Little foo, why have you become like this? Pay off whatever you owe immediately. Otherwise, don't ever come back to our home. The man said in panic, Mom. Mom? The line went dead. Not long after, his elder sister also called. The man hurriedly asked, Big sis, what's with Mom? Did someone say something to her? His elder sister said angrily, Would anyone need to tell our Mom anything? Call yourself on your cell phone and listen to it. You. You have totally disgraced our family. The man quickly used his chauffeur's cell phone to call himself. The person you are calling has been identified as a debtor by the Supreme People's Court. Kindly urge the individual to fulfill their obligations under the legal documents as soon as possible. The man's eyes darkened and he nearly fainted. Heck your grandpa. Who did this? You're too hecking wicked. At a villa. A couple was having a conversation. Little Juan, I really like you a lot, so marry me. My parents still have some hesitations, but they're starting to relent a little. Don't worry, I'll go visit your family today and convince your parents. All right. Oh yes, my cell phone has died. My mom to call your phone later. Let's select a restaurant to eat at. She likes spicy food the most, and my dad loves drinking. Don't forget that. Sure, no problem. Ring, ring, ring. A call arrived. The youth hurriedly answered it with a sweet and polite voice. Hello, auntie. The woman on the other end said coldly, get my daughter on the phone. The young man was startled. 
he hadn't expected the other party's attitude to change so suddenly. He handed the phone to the girl. He heard her mother railing at her, are you stupid or what? Don't you know that he owes money? The girl was stunned. Owes money? Impossible. His family is pretty well to do. Her mother said, there's a court notice linked to his phone. My foolish daughter. What kind of man did you find? You've been lied to by him all this while. Leave him immediately. Our family may be poor and average, but you must not find someone like that. And come home right now. The girl left. Before leaving, she even gave the young man a slap across his face. The young man was completely stunned, not knowing what had happened. When he used the villa's landline to call his cell phone, he finally learned what had happened. Holy heck! Holy heck! Holy heck! Who is it? Who the hell is so wicked to do something like this? On this day, countless deadbeats around the country were in a state of confusion. They had thought that they were the most shameless people in the world. But never could they have imagined that there was someone who was even more shameless than them. The Supreme Court. We were wrong about you. Since when did you hecking become like this? Chapter 1627, A Brilliant Reputation. In a group chat. Many of the deadbeats in here knew each other personally. Old who, did something happen to your cell phone's incoming ringtone? It got changed by the Supreme Court. Old Chi, how about you? Mine too. Will it stop if we turn off our phones? It doesn't work that way, I've already tried it. Even after turning the phone off, people can still hear the Supreme Court's message when they call in. Only after that will it say that the phone has been turned off. Can we cancel the number then? That doesn't work either. Moreover, all the cell phone numbers, including our home landlines, have had their incoming ringtone changed by the Supreme Court via the telecommunications companies. How hecking devious. Aren't they being too shameless by doing this? Who the hell came up with such a rotten idea? The business deal that I successfully negotiated has fallen through because of it. It's worth over tens of millions of yuan. What's the big deal about that? I lost my fiancé because of it. They're totally out to get us this time. When did the Supreme Court start behaving in such troublemaking ways? W what times do we live in? Even a government organization has started behaving like the mob. There was a wave of scolding in the group chat. Many of the deadbeats were driven crazy. A lot of these people were not afraid of being called out in the public notices since not many people would look at them anyway. Who had the time to check the list of criminals on the television and newspapers every day? But it was different this time. It wasn't a public notice, but something that was a million times harsher. These people also had relatives, friends, and colleagues. Some even had business partners too. But with this, the people around them were now aware of their situation. This sort of pressure was simply too overwhelming. This also made the news in China. The Supreme Court clamps down hard on deadbeats. The Supreme Court makes its move. The deadbeat incoming ringtone is born. Shock. The Supreme Court resorts to unorthodox measures. The news also did a detailed write-up on the deadbeat incoming ringtone. On Weibo. The netizens were gobsmacked when they saw the news. Holy shit. This, the Supreme Court is so smart. Ha 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 ha. Ayo, hey, I'm dying of laughter. This is hilarious. They can even hecking do this? Whoever came up with such an idea? This move is the best. It's so devious. I'm laughing like crazy. Here's a like for the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is amazing today. Beautifully executed. Foot, ha 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 ha. Is this still the Supreme Court that I thought I knew? A wicked move like that couldn't have been thought up by just anyone. What a bright move by the Supreme Court. All hail our country's governmental organization. When faced with such scum, there's a need to use similarly scummy tactics to deal with them. Well done. This should have happened a long time ago. Those deadbeats have always thought that they were unscrupulous. But who could have guessed our government?
Governmental organization can be even more unscrupulous when they want to. The Supreme Court has played it really well. I just want to know now whose great idea this was. What a genius. They had better get a promotion and a raise. At night. Zhong Yi's parents' house. As he was too lazy to cook, Zhong Yi brought his wife and child over to his parents' place for dinner. As soon as Zhong Yi entered the house, he called out, Dad, Mom, I'm hungry. His mother stared at him. All you know is to eat. Cece said listlessly, Nana, I'm hungry too. His mother dotingly said, Ayo, eat some grapes to tide you over, my dear. I'll get Pops to quickly heat up dinner. Turning around, she said, go on now. Didn't you hear our granddaughter say that she's hungry? Wu Ziqing immediately said, Mom, I'll go heat it up. His father said, you don't have to. You've been working all day. It was time to eat. His mother, who happened to have just watched the news, said to her daughter-in-law with a laugh, Oh yes, there was news that really tickled your dad and me. That incoming ringtone for those deadbeat stunt by the Supreme Court is so satisfying to hear about. His father also laughed. That was a good idea. It was such a good idea. Wu Ziqing smiled and said, the idea was suggested by little Yi. His mother was stunned. What? His father exclaimed, Little Yi suggested it. Wu Ziqing said, The Supreme Court's people came by to the Central Publicity Department today when Little Yi brought me lunch, so he floated the idea to them. Son. His mother looked at him. Why are you so wicked? Zhong Yi said in a speechless manner, I'm just doing a service to the people. His mother said in amusement, Those deadbeats have probably been done in by you. At this moment, a cell phone rang. It was Wu Ziqing's phone. She picked up a napkin and wiped her mouth before walking off to take the call. Hello? On the other end, it was old Qian from the Supreme Court. His tone sounded different from the afternoon as he spoke very excitedly, Minister Wu, it's me. It's old Qian? Let me give you a piece of good news. You absolutely can't imagine it, ha 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 ha. Of the 175 names on the latest batch of major debtors list, 103 of them have already repaid their debts. Furthermore, this number is still increasing as we, another person could be heard talking to old Qian. Then he said excitedly to Wu Ziqing, latest update, there are 108 people who paid up. Old Wu laughed. That's good. Thank your husband for me. Thank teacher Zhong. He has really helped out the courts this time. Let me find a day and I'll treat teacher Zhong to a meal in my personal capacity. You must convince him to accept my gratitude. He then repeated, you must thank your husband for me. Old Wu smiled. All right, I'll let him know. The call ended. Old Wu came back to the dining table and said calmly, that was from the Supreme Court. 108 debtors have already paid up, so old Qian wanted to give you his thanks. He mentioned that he would like to buy you a meal someday. His father was stunned. It was that effective? Zhong Yi smiled and said, I knew it would be. Meanwhile, the various courts around the country received many calls. The deadbeats they had been chasing for repayment were now all actively looking for the courts. Beijing Municipal High People's Court. Judge Lu. Yes? I'm willing to pay up. Right now. Ah. Sure. I give up, I really give up this time. Shanghai Municipal High People's Court. Judge Ju. Oh, it's Boss Li. How's the money coming? I've already paid up. Can you all quickly retract the incoming ringtone? Oh, I have to verify it first. There's no rush. You might not be urgent, but I am. Shenzhen Municipal High People's Court. Judge Wu, you people are too extreme. Haha, <laughs> when it comes to dealing with you all, there's a need to do so. All right, I give up, I admit defeat. Can you pay up within this week? Yes. I can. You should have done so earlier. On TV. Central TV News Channel. The host said, today, the Supreme Court, together with the Central Publicity Department and various telecommunications companies, launched a special crackdown against deadbeat behavior. 
the effect is very clear, and as of now, 111 people have paid their arrears to the government. About 10 people have promised the local courts that they will make up for their arrears within the week. According to our reporter's understanding, the person who recommended this severe action that was undertaken by the Supreme Court was actually the Nobel Prize laureate, teacher John Yi. During the course of our interview with the Supreme Court, they repeatedly expressed their gratitude to teacher John Yi. When this news was broadcast, the Chinese society blew up. In the Deadbeats chat group, Holy heck! It's Zhong Yi? That rotten idea was suggested by him? Heck! He's too ruthless. That hooligan! That hecking hooligan! Online! The netizens were laughing like crazy. What? Face smacking Zhong? Damn! So he was the one behind it. I knew it. I was wondering who could have come up with such a despicable strategy. Ha 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 ha. So it was the rotten idea of our spiritual strategist. No wonder it felt so familiar. Your sister. Zhong Yi's spiritual tactics have finally found a practical usage. And it even succeeded. So our spiritual strategist isn't just talk. It really succeeded. Amazing job, face smacking Zhong. This is the first time a spiritual tactic has been put into practice. Would that meteorites that destroy carrier's theory work then? It just might. On this day, the reputation of Zhong Yi as a spiritual strategist became even more brilliant than before. Chapter 1628, Setting Sights on Hollywood. The next day, at the studio. Good morning, Director Zhong. Good morning. You were all over the news again yesterday. I saw it. Oh yes, Sister Ha was looking for you just now. Is there a new project? I think so. The moment Zhong Yi arrived at the office, he had a quick chat with everyone. Ha Chichi also came down from upstairs at this time. She looked radiant. Director Zhong, you're finally here. I was just looking for you. Shall we talk in the conference room? There's something big. Zhong Yi said, sure, let's have a meeting then. Ha Chichi said to everyone, come on, everyone, let's have a meeting. In the conference room. Everyone got seated. John Yi spoke first. He said with a laugh, our work has been smooth sailing recently. We've broken into the international celebrity rankings and stabilized our position there and fought hard to gain a certain degree of fame. It's now time for us to think of the next step, so I want everybody to think of which jobs we should take from here. The international entertainment industry is unlike the domestic one, with a lot more restrictions to it. For example, on the issue of ethnicity, the international scene is still not that impressed with Asians. So this is another problem that we must consider carefully when accepting a job offer. Let's talk about how we should feel our way forward towards the next step. Oh right, Old Ha mentioned a big matter earlier. Why don't you tell us about it first? Ha Chichi and Jongs were smiled at each other. Ha Chichi suddenly said, what do you make of us going to Hollywood? Zhong Yi was startled. Hollywood? Zhongzhua laughed and said, yes. Variety. Music. Television series. Animation. Comics. Novels. Zhong Yi had already dabbled in all the various forms of entertainment and industries except for the film industry, which he had basically still not touched yet. Although during his early years, Zhong Yi had acted in some supporting roles on one or two movies, he wasn't that different from an extra on the set. So those experiences couldn't be considered as having dabbled in film before. As such, Zhong Yi's resume and achievements in the film industry were still a blank, nor had anyone ever addressed him as an actor before. Ha Chichi said, right now, it's only the film industry that we haven't dipped our toes in. Everyone should know that film is the largest industry in the entertainment circle, with nothing else coming close. Today, more than half of the international celebrities are movie stars, with all the other countries' celebrities still obsessed with getting into the film industry. This is because they have the greatest audience numbers, and it's also the fastest path to fame. So I feel that we can attempt to enter Hollywood now and open a path forward from there. Zhong Yi asked, did Hollywood come forward with a project for me? Yes. 
Jones was smiled and said, in fact, you wouldn't believe which film crew approached us. Zhong Yi blinked. Which one? Ha Chichi said, Commando 2. All of the studio staff were surprised. Commando? Isn't that a Hollywood blockbuster? It was first shown two years ago, and the global box office earnings were around 500 or 600 million US dollars. They're going to film the sequel? And they've invited director Zhong? Heavens! Zhong Yi said, what role is it? Ha Chichi said, there are six lead characters in the show, with two of them being the main leads. The other four will be supporting characters, and one of them is a Chinese character that they're inviting you to act as. It's still considered a leading role, and I'm guessing they're doing this in an attempt to expand into the Chinese market. Moreover, Commando 2 will be helmed by director Wilson, a famous director in Hollywood. With him, and the fact that the first movie of the series is very well known and performed very well at the box office, Commando 2's box office earnings will definitely not be bad either. Jones were also said, this is indeed a rare opportunity. Little Wang said, Commando is one of my favorite movies of all time. Zhong Yi looked at all of them. So does everyone think this will be fine? Tong Fu nodded. It's more than fine. Wu Yi also chuckled and said, if we can increase our popularity and fame through this movie, it will be much easier to take on the international scene in the future. A movie? Hollywood? A blockbuster sequel? Zhong Yi nodded. All right then. Old Ha, you're in charge of the liaison. Ha Chichi said excitedly, all right, I'll go and speak with them. Instantly, the studio staff were basking in this pleasant surprise. One day. Two days. Three days. Negotiating the salary. Auditioning. Holding the contract talks. All of the relevant processes were proceeding smoothly. On the web. The news went viral. What? They're going to film Commando too soon? A Chinese person will be joining the production? Why did they get him? Are they thinking of entering the Chinese market? He's already acting in a blockbuster film on his first foray into Hollywood? That Chinese guy is too lucky. It's a good thing that Zhong Yi isn't the main lead. Otherwise, I would definitely not watch it. In the international news. The cast list of Commando 2 has been set. A Chinese actor will be joining the cast of Commando 2. Wilson to direct his 10th blockbuster film. Hollywood has set its sights on the Chinese market. The outside world was bursting with excitement. But just before the movie was about to start shooting, just as Zhong Yi's contractual talks were about to be finalized, an unexpected incident happened. At a press conference. The famous American director, Wilson, bluntly said, after negotiations with different parties, we have come to a decision to not hire the Chinese celebrity. The Chinese film market is still not mature and regulated yet. I don't wish to affect our film's production and quality just because of the overseas box office earnings in China. Therefore, after discussions with the production studio, we have arrived at a decision. The role that was originally planned for Zhong Yi will be taken over by the Japanese star setter. An American reporter hurriedly asked, then why did you choose to invite Zhong Yi then? Wilson shook his head and chuckled. He was invited by the investors, but I have always been against it. A female reporter said, set is clearly not as popular as Zhong Yi, so why did you make the decision? Wilson said indifferently, this is a consideration we made based on a comprehensive number of factors. We have judged that Setter would be more suitable for this role, and his acting and image are also better. The reporter followed up with, are you trying to hype up the movie using the name of a Nobel Prize winner? Wilson said disdainfully, is there a need to hype up our movie? The news got out. A heated discussion followed on the web. A Japanese netizen, this is great. Another Japanese netizen, I like Seta. An Indian netizen, as long as Zhong Yi isn't starring in it, I'll watch it. A UK netizen, surely it's not good to go back on their word like this, right? A French netizen, does this mean they're giving up on the Chinese market? An American netizen, that's not called giving up. With Wilson's reputation and the brand name of Commando, the Chinese people would still watch it all the same even without a Chinese star acting in it. 
their country's film market has always been dominated by Hollywood productions since there aren't any outstanding domestic movies. The six months box office earnings of their domestic movies combined wouldn't even match what a single movie of ours can earn. So the Chinese market is negligible. A Canadian netizen, Zhong Yi, has failed in his bid to enter Hollywood. An Australian netizen, ha ha. There's a saying in China that goes, losing the first battle, meaning getting off on the wrong foot. I'm guessing he won't have an easy time in the future. A Russian netizen, the international entertainment circle is already a very difficult place for a Chinese celebrity to survive in. Zhong Yi has probably gone the furthest that he can. A Korean netizen, although I don't really like Zhong Yi either, I can say that he isn't someone who can be bullied this way. I think director Wilson's behavior was too hasty. An American netizen, haha, since when did Koreans start speaking up for the Chinese? The Korean netizen, I'm not speaking up for him. I'm just trying to tell you that you guys know too little about Zhong Yi. Trying to use him to hype up the movie? Going back on your word like this? Based on my understanding of Zhong Yi, he absolutely will not take this lying down. Director Wilson and Hollywood are behaving too carelessly. At least in Asia, no matter how much one might dislike Zhong Yi, even if they're a Korean or Japanese director, no one would dare to make fun of Zhong Yi like this. Besides, you can't imagine how united the Chinese are. You have absolutely no idea of what the name Zhong Yi means to their country. Wilson has cut himself off from the Chinese market. An American netizen mocked, the Chinese film market's box office earnings in recent years have indeed exploded. There are already movies that can reach earnings of around 700 to 800 million. But remember this, that is not in USD, but RMB. Besides, any of our blockbusters can already easily earn 700 to 800 million US dollars. Another American netizen, that's right. It's too bad that Wilson is the director, so he can choose not to use him if he wants. If Zhong Yi is so capable, let him make his own movie. Chapter 1629, Zhong Yi is going to make a movie. In China. Be it the public. Or the media. Or even the entertainment circle. It blew up everywhere in an instant. On Weibo. Damn, what the hell. Aren't they purposely playing with us? What's so great about Hollywood? Do you guys think you're that impressive? So you think that our Chinese market is negligible? Why don't you die instead? Don't you believe that we'll one day make a Chinese movie that will outperform your box office earnings? There's nothing that's impossible in this world. Face smacking Zhong didn't beg to appear in your movie. If you had found him unsuitable during the audition, just leave it at that. Why would you need to announce something like that during the press conference? And you had to drag in the Chinese market by calling it unregulated. And even say that Zhong Yi's acting and image are not good enough? That Wilson must have done it on purpose, right? And there was an American actor whose role had been confirmed earlier on like Zhong Yi but was later removed. Why was there a need for Wilson to bring it up during the press conference? It's not like that person provoked you, so why did you have to do it like this? This is tabloidization. It's clearly hype. Yeah, Zhong Yi has been really popular in the international scene recently. Mother hecker. I liked Wilson a lot in the past. He's a famous international director, after all. But by the looks of it, he's really not much of a person. I won't watch his movies in the future. Right, I won't watch them either. Boycott Commando 2. Let them earn nothing at the box office in China. We'll fully boycott the movie. Heck. This is so infuriating. Is there a need to boycott? Those people from Hollywood are all so snobbish and think that we Chinese people would watch a movie just because it was made by them. They're way too overconfident. What's more, they probably don't know who Zhong Yi's wife is, right? She's the head of the central publicity department. Whether or not Commando 2 will get published in China is still an unknown. The film crew of Commando 2 is really asking for it. Foot, that's quite true. I've never liked Zhong Yi. However, I'm on his side this time. Supporting teacher Zhong. The citizens were furious and showing their solidarity for Zhong Yi. Following, many of the entertainment circle celebrities and directors also stepped forward. Famous Chinese director Li Ku, 
don't be putting all the blame on China. We're not as weak as you think. Another famous Chinese director came forward and posted on Weibo, the Chinese film market is rapidly growing, and Zhang Yi has always been one of the most dedicated celebrities in the Chinese entertainment industry. So please don't speak nonsense like this, and be careful of being caught out by your words. Ning Lan's Weibo, despicable people are always trying to make trouble. Heavenly Queen Chu Meilin's Weibo, I hate people who disparage others to create hype. People's Daily. Xinhua News. Youth Daily. Many of the news media started targeting Wilson. China's film market is unregulated. To respect and be respected. The conceit of a Hollywood director. Hollywood's arrogance and prejudice. The incident blew up. Zhang Yi and his studio were once again pushed into the headlines of the news. At the studio. The atmosphere was a little subdued. Some people were angered. Some people were frustrated. Some people were cursing. Some people were feeling bad for Zhang Yi. Because of the offer from the Hollywood blockbuster production, their studio had turned down almost every job and worked hard to make it happen. Be it the audition or the contract negotiations, they had put in 200% of their sincerity, even asking for a very low salary, all this just to have a chance to show up in a Hollywood movie. For a time, they had thought it was a done deal. This was also the feedback given to them by the film crew of Commando 2. But no one could have expected that at the press conference, director Wilson would take a vicious stab at them. Only now did they realize that the crew of Commando 2 had no intention of hiring director John at all. From start to finish, it had just been a plot to hype up their movie. They first offered an olive branch. Then they trampled it. This would completely cut off director Zhang's future path in Hollywood. Little Wang roared, they've gone too far. Tong Fu said angrily, those bastards. But Zhang Yi wasn't affected. He laughed and said, that's enough, it's not even a big deal. Ha Chichi took the initiative and admitted to her mistake. She said solemnly, Director Zhang, the responsibility lies with me this time. It was my problem because I was too eager for us to go forward. Zhang's were added, I'm also to blame. I should have known such a good opportunity wouldn't just fall into our laps. We were all too anxious to succeed. Zhang Yi smiled and said, the decision was made by me. What has it got to do with you guys? However, Ha Chichi and the others knew and could tell during the meeting when they were making the decision to enter Hollywood, director Zhang did not seem to care much for it. It was only because of their insistence that he agreed to go for the audition. Perhaps director Zhang already had a hunch about the offer at that time. Zhang Yi laughed and said, all right, let's not try to take responsibility from each other over the matter. This incident has also taught us a lesson. We have never been the type of people to play by the book anyway. It's clear that we aren't suited to follow in the steps of other international celebrities, moving step by step into Hollywood by shooting one, three, or five movies and building up our popularity a little at a time. We still have to carve out our own unique path. That's the case for the domestic market, and also the case for the international scene. But now, Harchichi sighed. Even Hollywood isn't an option anymore. Jones was said, with this negative impact, I'm afraid the Hollywood directors won't even invite us. But Zhang Yi shook his head and said calmly, it's just making movies. It's not like we can only do that in Hollywood. Wu Yi was taken aback. What do you mean by that? Zhang Yi smiled. Isn't Wilson trying to act all high and mighty with me? Since he's issued the challenge, there's no reason for us not to accept it. Ha Chichi said, ah? Little Wang said startled, what are you planning? What am I planning? Zhang Yi only had two simple words, get him. Zhang's was said, how are we going to do that? Tong Fu said, wiping his sweat, that's a famous Hollywood director we're talking about. I've already decided. Zhang Yi astonishingly claimed, we will also make a movie ourselves. We won't go to Hollywood, but instead, stay in China to make a Chinese movie. I would like to see if we can end up with the bigger box office earnings, or would it be his commando to his box office earnings that win? We'll find out who's the mule and who's the horse. What? Film a movie? Little Wang was floored. W. We haven't even made a movie before. 
Tong Fu stammered, Why air, we, we don't know how to do it. But John Yi questioned, wasn't the TV series we produced also the first time we made one? Zhang Zhuo was already shivering in fear. But a movie is a different matter. It's entirely different, all right. Ha Chichi also said in panic, Director Zhang, we shouldn't make a movie just to get even. We're really inexperienced in this field. And besides, the opponent is a Hollywood director who is directing the sequel of a Hollywood blockbuster. What are we going to use to fight them in the box office earnings? It's impossible to compete. The gap between our Chinese film market and the American film market is not just a small one. Th this will be too risky. We mustn't make such an impulsive decision. John Yi smiled and said, actually, when you guys mentioned Hollywood and making movies, I got some ideas. What Wilson said at the press conference has made me even more certain of it. Why is it that our Chinese-made movies cannot show their face to the world? We can't do it. Why can't we do it? I'll present to our homeland a grand gift this time. Hollywood? Wilson? Commando 2? This bro is going head to head with them this time. I would like to see for myself whether a Hollywood blockbuster is really as good as they claim it to be. Ha ha. The studio staff all looked at one another. Everyone knew that they couldn't dissuade director Jong. Ha Chichi didn't know whether to laugh or cry. What movie are we going to make then? Jong Yi didn't even think. A military themed movie. Military themed? Jong's were blinked. Zhang Yi said something astonishing again. I've even thought of the movie's name already. It shall be called Wolf Warrior 2. Silence. Dead silence. Little Wang's eyes widened. What? Zhang Yi said, Wolf Warrior 2. Ha Chichi was stunned. What number? Zhang Yi said, 2. 2. 2. Everyone nearly fell to the ground. Zhongzhu gasped and said, Director Zhong, can you not joke with us? Zhong Yi said nervously, I'm not joking with you guys. Wu Yi said, we know that you're taking it up with Hollywood, but, but you can't make a movie that ends with two just because they're filming Commando 2. The Commando series has a first movie, all right? Even if we want to film a movie, we cannot just call it Wolf Warrior 2 for the first movie of the series. But Zhang Yi said, whoever made the rule that the first movie in a series cannot be called two? Wu Yi couldn't find any words to refute that. Ah, uh, it's true that there's no such rule. Zhang Yi nodded. Then it's decided. We'll call it Wolf Warrior 2. Everyone was at a loss for words. They didn't even know how to argue. They'd never seen this before. They'd never seen someone do things like this before. Be it in China or in Hollywood, in all these decades of the global film industry, there had never been a person who did not play their cards according to the rules when making movies. Director Zhang was indeed Director Zhang. The way his brain was wired was totally unlike that of a normal person's. Chapter 1630, the funding is in place. One day. Two days. Zhang Yi started getting busy with raising money for the production. Call after call, he checked with everyone he could. Hello, CEO Ju. Oh, it's teacher Jong, ha ha. I'm going to make a movie, are you interested? Ah? Make a movie? That's great. I'm quite interested. I would like to approach you to make an investment for it. Who are you working with this time? Director Lee? Does Director Lee still need to get investors for his films? No, I'm filming the movie myself. I'll be acting and directing. What? Filming it yourself? Yes. This. CEO Hu, there's something I would like to discuss with you. Please speak, Director Zhong. Please give me some funding. Funding? Are you making another TV series? Haha, <laughs> why would you need to make pitches for investments for your TV series? Just a word from you, and we would send the money straight on over. It's not a TV series, but a movie production. You're making a movie? Yes. Ah, uh, if it's that, then forget it. There has been a downturn in our domestic film market's box office earnings these days, 
so we're not dipping our toes into the industry for now. All right, I'll ask someone else then. CEO Chen, how about it? Are you really going to make a movie? Of course. You want a 200 million yuan investment? I'll need at least 200 million. A 200 million yuan investment, could you be thinking of making a 3D movie? You're making a 3D movie as your directorial film debut. Teacher Zhong, it's not that I don't believe in your abilities, but that's 200 million we're talking about. Our company alone can't fork out such a sum. Why not allow us to invest a few million instead? You can get a few dozen more companies and we can all bear the risk together. Forget it then. One company. Five companies. Ten companies. Zhong Yi had approached almost every investment company and movie studio that he knew in the entertainment circle, but he still did not manage to pull in any money in the end. Everyone was either scared off by Zhong Yi's desire to be a film director, or scared off by the title of Wolf Warrior 2, or if not, scared off by the huge investment amount needed for a 3D movie. Although some were willing to put in the money, they were at most willing to spend several million RMB as an investment sum. That would be totally useless as there would be too many investors required to raise the full sum. In that case, if every party were to point him in the direction they wanted the movie to be made in, Zhong Yi wouldn't be able to make the movie at all. No money? What could he do then? Without any money, there was nothing he could do. Back at home. Zhong Yi paced around the house with his hands behind his back. His parents and parents-in-law were also here today. His mother said in astonishment, Kid, are you really serious about making a movie? Zhong Yi said, of course I'm serious. I've even written the script already. You've never made a movie before, though. His father said helplessly, even if you're taking it up with that Hollywood director, you shouldn't be taking such a gamble. Zhong Yi laughed and said, not only am I taking it up with them, I'm also trying to do a little something for our domestic film industry. Li Qingqin asked worriedly, no one is investing any money in the production yet. Zhong Yi acknowledged and said, the main issue is that I have no connections with the entertainment companies. From the moment I debuted, I've been on my own. Moreover, this is my first time making a movie, so it's very normal for the investors to not trust me. Besides, most of the investors already have their own production studios and artists, so of course they would prioritize their own people when making movies. I'm also making a 3D movie that requires more funding, so they probably have their concerns. His mother said, don't talk about them. Even I have my concerns. John Yi said in amusement, Mom, aren't you too distrusting of me? His mother rolled her eyes. You decided to make a movie at the snap of a finger, so who could trust you? If you can't pull in funding, how are you going to film it? Wu Chang her asked. Zhong Yi threw up his hands. I'll think of a way myself. At worst, I'll use my own money to make the movie. He did a quick calculation. Gone with the Wind has sold very well and has earned a fair bit of royalties. Up until now, it should be around 30 million. Together with the bit of savings from last time, I should be able to take out more than 30 million yuan. At this moment, Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others also came. Ha Chichi asked in concern, did you manage to pull in any funding? Zhong Yi shook his head and asked, how much money does our studio have left? Ha Chichi was taken aback and looked to Zhong Zui. Zhong Zui was in charge of the studio's internal matters. He said, there isn't much money left in the studio. I suppose we can take out about 3 to 5 million or so. Zhong Yi said, then together with what I have, we should be able to raise close to 40 million. Little Wang was startled. You're thinking of putting in your own money. Zhong Yi said, if not, what can we do? Tong Fu coughed and said, Director Zhong, why not, why not forget about it? Zhong Yi gave him a look. That's not an option. I must make this movie. Wu Ziqing was playing with their child. When she heard that, she calmly said, I can fork out a little. Zhong Yi immediately said, no need. His father also said, your mom and I also have around 2 million in savings. Aya. Zhong Yi said, you guys don't have to worry. Besides, that money wouldn't make a difference, so don't bother yourselves with my affairs. I'll think of something and definitely gather enough. 
I don't believe I can't do it. This was Wolf Warrior 2 they were talking about, the same Wolf Warrior 2 that broke the Chinese box office back in his previous world. Although Zhong Yi was taking a risk by skipping over Wolf Warrior to make Wolf Warrior 2, he had already planned everything properly. In his previous world, a lot of people went to watch the sequel without catching the original first, so it wouldn't really impact the experience. With some slight tweaking of the script, it was entirely possible to avoid any abruptness in the storyline and make Wolf Warrior 2 into a standalone movie. But what was the current situation? He couldn't even get any investors to fund the production? Even Zhong Yi did not know whether to laugh or cry. After lunch, his parents in law went home. On the way, Li Qingqin suddenly said, Chang He. What? Wu Chang He asked. Li Qingqin said, I have something to discuss with you. Another two days went by. On the web, there were discussions of Commando 2 everywhere. Commando will start filming soon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It surely won't do badly at the box office. Whatever is showing during the same period as Commando 2 is really unlucky. Director Wilson's commercial effect is becoming more and more pronounced these days. Ha ha. There's no news from that Chinese guy either. Yeah, his international path is probably going to end here. That's true. Hollywood has shut him out, so what else can he do? If he wants to develop in the international entertainment industry, movie productions are going to be a part of it, and no one can get around that. On the road. In the car. Zhong Yi was also looking at a lot of world news. Commando 2 had already started filming, so this gave him an even greater sense of urgency. Of course, he had reason to believe that Wolf Warrior 2 could destroy the similarly themed military movie of Commando 2. But the problem was that other than himself, no one believed him. No one would dare to believe him. A Chinese movie wiping out a Hollywood blockbuster? A Chinese director destroying a Hollywood director? However you put it, it sounded like pure fantasy. Whoever heard that would also think that Zhong Yi was bragging. As such, the investment that Zhong Yi was looking for just couldn't be secured. How worrisome. How worrisome. Up ahead, he reached home. Zhong Yi got out of the car and took out his keys to open the villa's door. The moment he stepped in, he discovered that his family members were all here. It was the weekend today, and his wife wasn't at work. He washed his hands. Then got ready for dinner. The entire family sat together and started eating. His mother asked, you haven't secured the funding yet? Zhong Yi said in a dejected tone, the potential funders are all too short-sighted. Wu Chang He curled his lips and said, it's because you're taking such a huge risk this time, boy. His father said with a sigh, that bold temper of his, I really wonder who he takes after. His mother harumphed, in any case, he doesn't take after me. Oh, so does that mean he takes after me, his father asked. Everyone laughed. Only Zhong Yi did not. This fellow was totally distracted thinking about the matter of the funding. At this moment, his mother took out a card and placed it on the table. Here. Zhong Yi was taken aback. What? His father said, it's your mother and my savings. There's two million in it. Zhong Yi clicked his tongue. Aya, I don't need it. His mother harumphed, we don't have more than that. It's all we have. Zhong Yi was about to say something. On the other side of the table, after Wu Ziqing finished feeding their daughter, she suddenly reached into her pocket and took out a bank card as well. She pushed it towards Zhong and said calmly, there's 90 million on it. Exclamations rang out all around. Zhong Yi was absolutely shocked. What? His mother's jaw dropped. 90 million? Zhong Yi hurriedly said, damn, where did you get so much money? Old Wu casually said, from the mortgage. Zhong Yi jumped. Why you mortgaged the house? Old Wu nodded and said almost indifferently, use it. We can always pay off the mortgage when you earn back the money. But what if it doesn't make enough to pay off the mortgage, his mother asked in panic. She said in an angry and caring manner, Ayo, why is my daughter-in-law so foolish? This is the only place you all have to live, so how can you casually mortgage it? What if the movie fails? 
Where will you all stay then? What about the child? Zhong Yi said anxiously, quickly go and cancel the mortgage and return the loan. Old Wu said, it's already been signed. Zhong Yi felt really touched, but he still said, oh, you. How could you not discuss such a big matter with me? Besides, even with this 90 million, it's still not enough to shoot the movie. You're just, all of a sudden, his mother-in-law next to him said something. Li Qingqing also took out a bank card. It should be enough with this. Zhong Yi said in surprise, Mom? What are you doing? Li Qingqing handed the card to him. There's a 100 million on it, but the money hasn't been transferred yet. The bank will credit the amount by the end of the week. Take it. His mother was dumbfounded. A 100 million. Tears nearly fell from Zhong Yi's eyes. Where did you get so much money? Li Qingqing smiled and said, after we went home that day, I had a talk with Ziqing's father. At first, we wanted to go around to borrow some money for you. But after asking around, even though Little Mo and Ziqing's sister's businesses are doing all right, they don't have that much profit. So Ziqing's father thought that we might as well not trouble them. Since this is our son-in-law's career, we definitely have to support him. After that, we decided to mortgage the courtyard house to the bank. His mother said anxiously, that won't do. His father also hurriedly pushed the bank card back. In-laws, you all absolutely mustn't. His mother said, even if someone needs to mortgage their house, it should be us doing it. Li Qingqing pushed the card back again. Our courtyard house is larger and can get a greater mortgage. Besides, little Yi is our son-in-law. We have always treated him as a son. Since we're all a family, what's there to differentiate? Just take it. Zhong Yi said, Mom, keep it. How can I take your money? This really won't do. Wu Changhe said coldly, if we say that it's for you, just take it. What are you rambling for? Zhong Yi said, feeling moved, Dad. But, Li Qingqing said, seeing you going out from early in the morning until late at night to pitch investors, we don't feel good about it. We're unable to help out with other things, but we can still fork out this bit of money. Don't bother yourself with anything else and just make sure to make a good movie. Show those foreigners and Hollywood that our Chinese movies can make a name for themselves. Zhong Yi said, Mom, his mother. His father. His father-in-law. His mother-in-law. His wife. The entire family had somehow taken out their entire family fortune and gathered 200 million for him. Right now, Zhong Yi really did not know what he could say. With 190 million raised, and his own tens of millions of yuan, that would total over 200 million renminbi in funding. It was enough for him to make Wolf Warrior 2. In the end, Zhong Yi didn't refuse their help. He gathered up all three of the bank cards and said earnestly, Dad, Mom, Old Wu, I'll take the money. Don't you all worry. I will make a good movie. When the box office earnings are tabulated, I will return this money back to you all several times over. I'll consider this movie funded together by our family, so just wait, and see what I can do. Chapter 1631, Choosing the Cast The next day. It was still the weekend. At John Yi's studio. Everyone looked like they had seen a ghost. What? What did you say? The funding has arrived? Over 200 million? It was all contributed by your family? Director Zhong, th this is too risky. What if the movie doesn't do well at the box office? Then what will you do? Yeah, it's too risky. You shouldn't be putting all of your own money into it. Everyone in the studio felt extremely pressured. This was all of the savings and property that director Zhong's family had put into the movie. If they ended up losing money on it, wouldn't it mean that director Zhong's family would have to sleep on the streets? None of them had expected Zhong Yi to actually do something like this. It was a gamble to the death over the movie. Furthermore, they could not understand why he was so sure that this movie would be successful even though this was only his first time making a movie. He didn't even leave a path of retreat for himself. There's no need to talk about this anymore. Making a movie is always a risk that must be taken. Now that the matter has been settled and we have the funding as well, we can finally start the show. 
Everyone, quickly finish the work that you have on hand. Do whatever needs to be done, and turn down whoever we can turn down. For the next few months, we won't be doing anything else or taking any other jobs. We are going to go all out to make this movie. Our entire studio staff will form the base of the film crew of Wolf Warrior 2. Director Jong, we don't have enough manpower. Then go hire more people. We don't have any professional filming equipment either, then go buy some. What about the cast? I'll select them. The tasks were assigned as the film crew officially entered the preparatory phase. Although many of the studio's staff predicted that they would end up in the film crew of Wolf Warrior 2, they still turned to the heavens for an answer in their speechlessness when they heard director Jong telling them this. A majority of them had come through from television stations and used to make television shows. But now? What had they been doing all these years? Filming documentaries. Shooting music videos. Shooting advertisements. Making television series. And now, they had to hecking shoot a movie next. Sometimes, even they themselves felt that they were too ballsy. In this world, there was nothing left that director Jong didn't dare to make them film. At the office. Jong Yi flipped open the script and started thinking. It was time to determine the roles. Which actors should he invite on board? He picked up a pen and started scribbling on the first page. However, he only managed to write a single line at the top of the page, Wolf Warrior 2 cast, draft. Producer, Jong Yi executive director, Jong Yi screenwriter, Jong Yi stunt choreographer, Jong Yi assistant directors, Ha Chichi, Jong Zhuo male lead, Long Feng Jong Yi female lead, Rachel to be decided. Some of the roles still required further consideration, but he had already come to a decision for others. So he picked up the phone and called Yao Jintsai. Do, 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 the call connected. Old Yao, what are you up to? I'm eating out. How's your schedule looking? I've got nothing lately but I'm in negotiations to take part in an upcoming TV series that might start filming next month. Have you signed the contract yet? Not yet. Don't sign it then. Turn it down and leave your time for me. What are you planning? I want to make a movie. I've left a good role for you, and it's a character that only you can play. Other than you, I can't find anyone else who is suitable for it. What? You're making a movie? Then Zhong Yi made another call to action star Jiang Hanwei. Old Jiang, I would like to invite you to take part in a show. What show? I'm preparing to make a movie, and there's a role of a veteran soldier that I would like you to play. Ah? Are you agreeable? Make a movie? Since when did you start making movies? I just decided on it recently. Is it an international themed movie? No, I'm just going to make an ordinary domestic movie. The call ended. He gave Yu Qian's role to Yao Jintsai. And Wu Gang's role to Jiang Hanwei. These two were the actors he was absolutely sure about. There was no need for them to audition for their roles. This was because, during the course of filming in the name of the people, Zhong Yi learned everyone's acting chops, how good they were, and what they could do. He was very familiar with them. An hour later, Yao Jintsai and Jiang Hanwei rushed over. Are you serious? Yao Jintsai still had a look of disbelief on him. Jiang Hanwei also asked, Are you really thinking about making a movie? You're directing and acting? Zhong Yi tossed the script onto the table. The script is done, and the funding is secured. All we lack now are the actors, so why don't you both take a look at the script? Yao Jintsai rolled his eyes. Why would I read the script? Let me ask you this first, do you even know how to make movies? Zhong Yi laughed and said, why would I not know how to? Jiang Hanwei pointed over at two books that were on his table. Then can you explain what these books are for? The two books were, How to Make Movies What is Film? Zhong Yi was extremely embarrassed. He opened a drawer and threw the two books in. Aya, don't be bothered by these minor details. I was just browsing through them. Yao Jintsai said in a speechless manner, you don't know a thing about making movies at all. Zhong Yi boasted, I really know how to make a movie. Jiang Hanwei was speechless. Zhong Yi said, just tell me, 
Are you too willing to act in it or not? Yao Jintsai said dejectedly, my contract negotiations are nearly done. Is this movie of yours really reliable? Zhong Yi laughed and said, if it wasn't, I wouldn't have approached you too. How many years have we known each other? Would I scam either of you? Don't worry, they're definitely good roles. Wasn't it also my first time directing a TV series during In the Name of the People? How did that end up? You two still don't believe in me? Yao Jintsai said helplessly, all right, I understand. I'll turn down the offer by the other party. Zhong Yi looked at Jiang Hanwei. Jiang Hanwei nodded. All right then. Zhong Yi clapped his hands. All right, it's settled then. After the two of them left, Zhong Yi continued to ponder of the roles. At this moment, Ha Chichi happened to bring in something. Zhong Yi called out to her, Old Ha, I just thought of someone. What's the name of that American star who got replaced by Wilson on Commando 2? Ha Chichi was taken aback. He's called Jack. Zhong Yi decided on the spot. Okay, Jack, he has a very good image. Ha Chichi had also read the script. She said in surprise, are you thinking of getting him to play the main antagonist, Big Daddy? He's an international C-list celebrity. Although he isn't ranked higher than you, he's still an international celebrity. Ours is a Chinese movie, and the role is also a villainous one. Would he even agree to come? Even if you and him were both used to hype up Commando 2, it still wouldn't be easy to get him, right? With the funding we have, we wouldn't be able to give him a large salary either. Zhong Yi said, help me get in touch with him. I'll speak with him myself. Ha Chichi said sweating, you really have to gall to think that way. All right, I'll go and find out how to contact him. Very soon, they found his contact. Zhong Yi directly called Jack. Hello, Ak. Hi, who are you? I am Zhong Yi. Oh, it's you? Zhong Yi? Are you interested in coming to China to make a movie? China? There's a movie that I'm producing, and I think you would be interested in it. Half an hour. An hour. Zhong Yi coaxed Jack for two full hours. Something about getting back at Wilson. Something about taking on Hollywood. Something about how he must retaliate. Something about getting into the billion dollar box office earnings club. When the studio staff heard Zhong Yi's coaxing, they felt really speechless. Little Wang nudged her chin. Director Zhong is at it again. But to everyone's surprise, Jack was moved by Zhong Yi. Zhong, I'm willing to accept the role. I'll head to China with my agent tomorrow. Zhong Yi smiled and said, All right, Jack, I'll be waiting for you. After hanging up, Zhong Yi said, It's settled. The studio staff rolled their eyes or facepalmed. Ah. You can even do that. You're too good at cajoling others. I isn't he this hoodwinking others? Billion dollar box office earnings club? That's over six billion renminbi. In the history of the Chinese film market, no more than three movies had earned over a billion RMB. But you're so casually claiming something like six billion renminbi. Do you get uncomfortable if you don't brag for a day? And the most speechless thing is, Jack, you actually believed it? Oh my god. Aren't you too honest a person? Don't you know director Jong's nickname? He's the internationally renowned great trickster. Selecting the actors. Auditioning. Buying the equipment. Renting the venues. The film crew of Wolf Warrior 2 had quietly been formed. They were getting closer and closer to the day when the production would start shooting. Several days later. The news couldn't be contained any longer. Zhong Yi wants to make a movie? Shock. Zhong Yi crosses into the film industry. It has been reported that after Zhong Yi's failure to enter Hollywood, he will be acting in a self-directed movie. Movie title revealed, Wolf Warrior 2. Zhong Yi's virgin movie production to start shooting soon. Zhong Yi wants to challenge Hollywood? The news was too shocking. In an instant, all of China was bursting in excitement. On Weibo. Holy shit. Zhong Yi has flipped out. Yeah, he's making a movie himself? He'll be the director? 
I've already said that Zhong Yi wouldn't just sit around and do nothing after getting played by Hollywood. So Zhong Yi still had such a big trick up his sleeves. Challenging Hollywood. These guts, there's really no one else like him. But why do I feel it won't work? Even if Commando 2 isn't a box office success, it still shouldn't earn less than 500 million US dollars, right? That's equivalent to 3 billion renminbi. Besides, this is the Commando franchise, and with Wilson's name as a famous Hollywood director, it should definitely surpass 3 billion renminbi. I think Zhong Yi is only going to shoot a domestic movie, right? How is he going to take on take on Hollywood with that? If he loses, that would be such a loss of face. It would surely affect Zhong Yi's international popularity and further prove Wilson's claims that China's film industry is not good enough. Zhong Yi is laying down everything for this. I heard that he poured all of his family's fortune into funding the movie. He even mortgaged his house. That can't be true, right? It's true. Someone from a bank revealed that Zhong Yi has really mortgaged his property. He has put all his money, honor, and reputation into making this movie. It's like he intends to hecking fight to the death with Wilson and Commando too. John Yi is a real man. But why is the movie named Wolf Warrior 2? Foot, how would I know? Yeah, what about one? Face smacking Jong must have gobbled up the first one. This fellow really doesn't follow the hecking rules at all. Some people were cheering for Jong Yi. Some people were not optimistic about this movie. In just a short time, the entire country was in a ruckus. Chapter 1632, the cameras start rolling for Wolf Warrior 2. On the web. Netizens from all over the world were in a heated discussion. That Chinese man is going to make a movie? Are you serious? It was reported on an international news outlet. What movie is he going to shoot? I don't think Hollywood invited him to take part in any productions, right? He's making a Chinese movie. I heard that it's also a military movie, haha. Ha. He's already an international celebrity. Why is he still doing domestic movies? He failed to step into Hollywood, so of course he could only make a movie himself. This Chinese man really has a backbone. He actually went ahead to direct a movie on his own. But what influence can a Chinese movie possibly have? Yeah, his international popularity score will surely fall sharply. Does he intend to fight against Hollywood with his box office earnings? I can laugh at this joke for an entire year. Instead of playing his part well as an actor, he had to go and become a director? Does he think that just anyone can direct a movie? Foolish. He's gonna take a tumble this time for sure. Let's wait and see how the Chinese man makes a fool of himself, ha ha ha. America. Russia. Canada. India. The Netherlands. Netizens from all over the world found this to be a laughing matter. On this day. In the morning. It was the official lensing ceremony for Wolf Warrior 2. All of the cast members were present today. Zhong Yi stood there looking at everyone, then gave a short speech. There will no incense table, no red cloth, no sacrificial ceremony for the gods today. We won't be following any of the standard practices of the film industry here, and neither do I believe in them. I've always believed that man will conquer fate. A movie is made by people, not given by the heavens, so I believe only in people, I believe in you all. I know that a lot of people in the outside world are waiting to see us make a fool of ourselves. They're waiting to step on our faces and spit on us when we fail. Many people around the world do not value us, nor value the Chinese film industry. They never address our Chinese celebrities by their names and always refer to us as that Chinese person. They don't say our movies by their titles either. It always, this Chinese movie, or, that Chinese movie. This is the arrogance and prejudice that the world has against China. Chinese person? Chinese movie? Never mind. That is what I like too. I am a Chinese person, and I will make a Chinese movie to show them. Everyone in the audience was listening to him speak. Then Zhong Yi said loudly. Wilson? Heck your grandpa. Commando? Heck your grandpa. Hollywood? Heck your grandpa. Foreign movies? 
Heck your grandpa. I hereby declare. We have officially started rolling the cameras for Wolf Warrior 2. Suddenly, cheers rang out. Yao Jiantsai clapped. Jiang Hanwei nodded. Dong Shan Shan smiled. Jack gave him a thumbs up. Quite a few people could feel their blood racing. In the history of all lensing ceremonies for a movie production, there had never been a person who dared to speak like that. Zhong Yi was indeed quite different from other directors. He was someone who dared to say anything and do whatever was necessary. The lensing ceremony was over. The movie started its shoot on the very same day. The lensing ceremonies of other film crews would just consist of the ceremony itself, and they wouldn't officially start the shoot on the same day. At most, they would just capture a few scenes for the sake of it since the important and major scenes would require a lot of preparation. But it wasn't so for Zhong Yi as his lensing ceremony really signaled the rolling of the cameras. He even chose the venue of the ceremony to be near the shooting location. After he finished his speech, Zhong Yi brought all of the cast of the film crew aboard a ship. Everyone was to follow the film crew to carry out the shoot today. Although many of the cast members were not required for the scene today and had free time, Zhong Yi still requested for them to follow the crew. This was because he wanted to quickly get the team to gel and for them to get familiarized with the filming atmosphere and his style of directing. This was so that they could get into the groove of filming as soon as possible. At sea. The weather was pretty good. The ocean breeze was gently blowing. The cargo ship was moored at a predetermined location in the open ocean. More than 30 African extras were already ready and waiting. The speedboats, rescue rafts, diving equipment, and waterproof cameras were all standing by. Zhong Yi directed the set. I want the speedboats to maintain a distance of 20 meters at all times. The extras will run towards here afterwards. You, take a fall here, but be careful. You, after you're done filming the underwater scene, come up to the surface. I need the lifeguards to be vigilant here. Please take care of the situation. The moment Zhong Yi got down to the scene, he turned serious. It felt as though he were on adrenaline as he started taking care of all small and big matters alike on the set. The actors were all standing in the distance. This set of scenes won't be easy to shoot. It might take up to two weeks to complete. I don't think so. Director Zhong is well known for his speed when it comes to filming. It's not like you guys don't know that. That's true. Is this really the director's first time making a movie? That's right. I suppose it is the first time we're meeting as well. Why don't we introduce ourselves to each other? Yes, there are a lot of fresh faces here that I'm not really familiar with. Hello, seniors. My name is Sophia. My father is American while my mother is Chinese. I'm still a rookie in the industry, so please be kind to me. My name is Ricky, and I'm a stuntman from Hollywood. My name is Dolby, I'm also a Hollywood stuntman. Some introduced themselves in Chinese. Others introduced themselves in English. Each of them had been carefully selected for their roles by Zhong Yi. Some of them, like Yao Jintsai, Dong Shanshan, and Jiang Hanwei, had been approached by Zhong Yi over the phone and were friends of his who had worked with him before on previous productions. Meanwhile, others were chosen from a mass audition, like the female lead, Sophia. Then there were some like the American stuntmen who were recommended by Jack. He knew a lot of people from the years that he worked in Hollywood, so when he heard from Zhong Yi the special requirements that he had for the American action stars, Jack took the initiative to contact them. He even personally helped Zhong Yi negotiate their pay. Through this, Zhong Yi felt that Jack was quite a good person. An hour. Two hours. The preparatory work took the entire morning to complete. But when the actual filming was just about to begin, an argument broke out. No way. That absolutely won't do. Director Zhong, you're mad. I don't agree either. Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others were all getting anxious. But Zhong Yi just looked at them. Are you guys the director or am I the director? Are we going to follow what I said or what you said? Then he bluntly said, get ready, we'll try out a shot first. Everyone, to your positions. Ha Chichi called out, director Zhong. Zhong Yi shouted, begin. 
the cameras started rolling. The extras started moving. The speedboat also drove to the predetermined location. Right at this moment, all of the film crew saw the blur of a person sprint across the ship's deck. He stretched his arms out wide and jumped right into the vast ocean. Splash! The person disappeared. It was Zhong Yi. Dong Shanshan screamed, Zhong Er. Yao Jintsai was petrified. Where is he? Where is he? Jiang Hanwei rushed over. What's the meaning of this? Where's the stuntman? Jack and several of the American actors also started to panic. Where are the stuntmen? Where's Zhong Yi's stuntman? Why has the director jumped in? The female lead, Sophia, also started panicking. At this very moment, everyone was stunned. There were questions marks all over their heads. Where was the double? Where was the double? Ha Chichi said with a sunken expression, he said he didn't want to use a stuntman. Jack hurriedly said, how is that possible? This is such a dangerous scene. Even in Hollywood, we have our stuntmen handle them. No actor would possibly jump into the sea without any protective measures. There was no diving suit. There was no oxygen cylinder. There weren't even any diving goggles. He just jumped in like that. The people on the ship were going crazy. Director Zhong. Come up quickly. Where is he? I can't see him anymore. Quick, someone, save him. Hurry. One minute. Two minutes. After a full two minutes and ten seconds, a head suddenly emerged from the surface of the water. That person grabbed onto the side of the speedboat and gasped for air. The expression on his face had already changed. The rescue rafts in the vicinity and the rescue team swarmed. They were also worried out of their minds. Zhong Yi waved it off and shouted, Tong Fu. Tong Fu, who was in full diving gear, swam over. You scared me to death. Zhong Yi reached out and took the camera. Let me see the footage. After scrubbing through it, he said, no, the angle is not right. You have to move further back. Soon after, Zhong Yi reboarded the ship. As soon as he got on the ship, everyone came over and surrounded him. Ha Chichi said, are you all right? Zhong Yi smiled. I'm fine. Zhongs were shouted, change into some dry clothes first. Zhong Yi scraped the seawater off his face. Another shot. Little Wang was so anxious that she nearly cried. It's too dangerous like this. You're taking such a big risk. Ha Chichi also said, if anything happens to you, what of the film crew? How are we going to continue shooting the movie? How are we going to answer to Minister Wu? But Zhong Yi was not bothered by it. Nothing will happen. Zhongzhu didn't know what to say. Besides, why does it have to be a long take? Jack asked Dong Shanshan, who was beside him, what are they talking about? Dong Shanshan translated for the American actors. Something about a long take. A lot of people did not understand what that meant. But when the Americans heard it, they were scared out of their wits. Jack exclaimed, long take? Ricky nearly jumped. No. Dolby yelled, Director, you're risking your life that way. Even a Hollywood director wouldn't dare to lightly use a long take. What's more, this scene is happening in the ocean. Yao Jintsai asked, What does that mean? Dong Shanshan said, I don't know what a long take is either. Jack and the others explained it to them. The long take is a shot where the camera would continuously roll throughout a scene without any cuts. Using this scene as an example, after Zhong Yi dived into the sea and wrestled with the African actors in the water to when he surfaced, the entire three minutes or so underwater would be shot in one entire take. There would be no time for him to take a breather, no cuts, and no switch in the sequence. So there wasn't a need to combine the scene in post with the different sequences shot from when he dived into the water, and fought with the other characters. This is a commonly used technique in Hollywood and it helped to create a more realistic scene to the viewer and gave them a better sense of immersion and shock. There were too many good points. The advantages were really great. But the only drawback was that it could be fatal as well. It wasn't easy to film. There were even some scenes that couldn't be shot this way. 
Yao Jintsai was stunned. So that's what long take means? Sophia gasped. Holding his breath for three minutes. Who can possibly do that? Jack said, what's more, he needs to hold his breath in an intense fight scene. You're risking your life like this. Jong, this is not something you should joke about. No one can film a scene like that. Zhong Yi had already changed into dry clothes. Will the non-essential personnel please step back? Dak facepalmed. Sophia said, Director. Zhong Yi shouted, One more shot. Three. Two. One. Action. The next moment, amid everyone's screams, Zhong Yi jumped into the ocean again. He held his breath. Dived into the water. Fought the enemies. Roped them up. However, the second take still failed. This time, the shot went great. It had gone according to Zhong Yi's intentions. But the problem was with Zhong Yi himself in the end, as he was unable to hold that last bit of breath. He choked on a mouthful of water and quickly surfaced. Shooting a fight scene while holding his breath for two to three minutes was even difficult for a martial arts master like Zhong Yi. Back on the ship. A change of clothes. Zhong Yi said, again. One take. Five takes. Ten takes. Everyone aboard the ship fell silent. On the very first day of the movie's filming, they were already jittery from watching. Perhaps it was only at this moment that they fully realized what Zhong Yi's earlier words really meant. It was absolutely not spoken just for the sake of it. He was really serious. He was prepared to risk his life. Jack suddenly sighed and said, if this is how the Chinese film their movies, it wouldn't take 10 years before Hollywood gets surpassed. Chapter 1633, A Last Minute Actor Swap. Two days later. Beijing, at home. Mommy. MHM? Why isn't daddy home yet? Your daddy has gone overseas for work. I miss daddy. Daddy is very busy, so Cece must be obedient. Cece will be obedient, but I miss daddy. How about this? I'll video call your daddy so that we can see what he is doing. Yay. I want to video call daddy. I want to video call daddy. Wu Ziqing took out her cell phone and video called Zhong Yi. Although she didn't know whether he was busy or not, she still gave it a try. Do do, do do, the video call connected. On the cell phone, Zhong Yi's face appeared. Cece said in surprise, Daddy. Daddy. On the other end, Zhong Yi was smiling happily and saying, Hey, my dear daughter, did you miss Daddy? Cece nodded in response. I miss Daddy. Zhong Yi smiled and said, Then give Daddy a kiss. Mwa. Cece gave him a kiss. Old Wu asked, How's the shoot progressing? Zhong Yi said, It's going pretty smoothly. Old Wu said, why have you become so tan? Are you tired? Zhong Yi laughed and said, I'm not tired. It's just that I was out in the sun a lot. It's no big deal. Old Wu reminded him, filming an action movie is dangerous. You must watch out for your safety. Zhong Yi said, it's not dangerous at all, don't worry. After chatting for a while, they finally hung up. On the other end. At a hospital. Zhong Yi put down his cell phone and looked at the end of the bed. The doctor and nurses were helping him change his dressing while an four drip was attached to him. Quite a few people from the film crew were also standing next to him. Ha Chichi said anxiously, Doctor, how is it? The doctor replied, Fortunately, he didn't break any bones. Zhong Yi laughed and said, See, I told you guys I was fine. You're getting all worried for nothing. What do you mean by you're fine? Zhongs was said, you scared us to death. Jiang Hanwei said with some lingering fear, it was too dangerous today. What a close shave. Dong Shanshan shook her head furiously. You're too good at lying to your family. Zhong Yi warned, it's very normal to get injured on a movie set, so what's the big deal? You guys had better not tell anything to my wife and daughter. I'm really fine. The doctor said, you'll be okay after recuperating for a few days in the hospital. But Zhong Yi said, that won't do. I'm okay already. 
I can leave after the four is empty. Ha Chichi said in annoyance, you have to listen to the doctor. Zhong Yi said, I know my own body. There are still two more sets of scenes scheduled today. Let's hurry up and change venues after we finish with the shoot. Be it the money. Or time. Zhong Yi couldn't afford either of them in his current state. He had directed many shows before, but it was different this time. Movies were still too huge of a leap forward from the television series and variety shows that he used to film. Furthermore, this was an action movie that required them to shoot their scenes across China and Africa. There were simply too many things to prepare and shoot. The extras, the explosion scene, the props, all of that meant that the movie couldn't be filmed too quickly. Their funds were limited as his own family had pulled together 200 million for the production. Each day they delayed it was money lost, so Zhong Yi had to hurry and make the best of his time. But sometimes, things happened the more anxious one was. After Zhong Yi insisted on being discharged from the hospital, an incident happened. On the third day after the shoot began, the film crew's final cast member finally arrived. It was the actor who would play the role of the spoiled brat, Song Qi. Due to the role's requirement, Zhong Yi had invited a very popular male idol to join the cast. Although Song Qi was not an S-lister in China, he was still a big star who was a top-tier celebrity on the Chinese A-list rankings and had many contracts on a lot of productions. He had been acting in a movie that had just wrapped up filming. This was the reason why Zhong Yi gave him the green light to join the cast only after he was done with the other production. As such, he was the last member to join the production set of Wolf Warrior 2. Zhong Yi had not worked with Song Qi before, but as his reputation online was pretty good and with Li Ke's recommendation, Zhong Yi decided to invite him to join the cast. But in fact, this was not the case at all. On the night after Song Qi arrived with his agent and assistants, Song Qi's agent approached the directorial team. The agent bluntly said, Director Zhong, why didn't you get a double for Song Qi? Zhong Yi frowned. There are no dangerous scenes. Why would he need a double? The agent said, no one does a shoot like this. The amount of work is too great. We didn't ask for a high salary in the first place, so this won't do. Ha Chichi said coldly, Song Chi's salary is the highest on the set. Zhongzhu also said, isn't everyone else doing the same? The agent shook his head. That won't do. We have to ask for a higher compensation. Zhong Yi asked, by how much? The agent said, if this is how we're going to do the shoot, then the salary will have to be doubled. Song Chi's contract was worth 20 million. By doubling that, it would mean he was asking for 40 million. Zhong Yi replied, impossible. The agent said, we don't usually take part in productions that pay us less than 40 million. It's even quite normal to get compensated 50 to 60 million for other movies, and that's currently the market price. Ha Chichi said, you've already signed the contract. Why didn't you bring this up back then? Where's the logic of raising the asking price after the production is already underway? What the hell are you guys trying? The agent simply said all right and left. But when the actual shoot began that night, Song Chi clearly started goofing off. His expressions were rigid. His actions were slow. He was not giving any effort on purpose. Even Jiang Hanwei was angered by this. What are you doing? Song Chi said, what about it? Zhong Yi lost his temper on the spot. Get the heck out of here. Replace the actor. Song Chi's agent immediately said, it's you guys who are requesting a replacement, so that's a breach of contract. Song Chi led his agent and assistants off the set. Zhongs were cursed, what the heck is this? Jiang Hanwei said, the male idols these days have totally been spoiled by the investor's money. He looked at Zhong Yi and said, don't get angry over this. Your injury hasn't healed yet. It would be a wonder if Zhong Yi didn't blow his top. He immediately called director Li Ku and took it up with him, director Li, we've known each other for so many years. Are you trying to trick me? Li Ku was startled. Zhong'e, what's the matter? Zhong Yi said, what kind of person did you recommend me? I even asked you which male idol in the industry was most reputable and you told me that Song Chi was okay. Okay, my ass. He asked for greater compensation at the last minute and even wanted it to be doubled. 
When we were filming a scene that required him to perform some roles, he deemed it tiring and Hecking wanted a double to do it instead. When I didn't agree, he acted like a bastard on the set and deliberately acted badly. After shooting for the entire night, there isn't even a single scene that can be used. What the hell? Lika said with a heavy voice, that happened. Zhong Yi said feeling annoyed, I've already told him to get lost, so tell me, where am I going to get another actor to save the day? Lika said in a serious tone, Zhong Ah, I understand. Don't worry, I'll give you an explanation for this matter. The call ended. Ha Chichi said, we can't blame director Li for this either. Zhong's was said, the main issue is who do we get to replace Song Qi? Zhong Yi was also considering his options. In a chat group for directors. Li Ka put out the news. Don't use Song Qi ever again. Quite a few directors started asking, why is that, old Li? Li Ka gave them an account of the events. Such a thing happened? Isn't Little Song's reputation quite good? An actor like this has got real problems with their character. Director Zhong has really been taken for a ride. All right, we know what to do. This sort of actor can't be used again. No one would dare to either. The actors had their own circle. And so did the directors. At Song Chi studio. Song Chi and his people had just gotten off the plane when they got wind of the news through the grapevine. What? Director Ju's next movie is going to change actors? Hasn't the deal already been negotiated? We were going to be the first male lead in that movie. I heard that director Lee lost it in the director's group and said that he wants us blacklisted. How can he do that? Song Chi's expression darkened. Song Chi's agent was panicking. They had not expected the situation to turn out like this. The next day. In the morning. The entire film crew's progress was at a standstill. Without the important cast members on set, they couldn't proceed with the shoot. The role of the spoiled brat was too important to the entire show. So Zhong Yi couldn't be sloppy about it. He needed a suitable person to play the role. Who should he look for? Who could play the role? He didn't sleep the entire night and kept thinking about this. All of a sudden, Zhong Yi thought of a person. It was someone who was even more suited to play the role than Song Qi. However, he didn't know if he could invite that person onto the movie. He hesitated for a long time before he finally called Ha Chichi over to help him get that person's contact information. When Ha Chichi heard the name, she was stunned for quite a while. They found his cell phone number. Then called him up. Hello, who is this? I am Zhong Yi. Zhong Yi? Teacher Zhong? Boss Qian Jr., how are you? Why did you call me? Are you looking for my dad? He's at the office and his cell phone isn't off either. Is this about your movie? It's about the movie. Regarding the movie's distribution? You can speak directly to my dad then. Based on your relationship with my dad, it shouldn't be a problem for him to distribute the movie for you. It's not that. I'm actually looking for you. Looking for me? There's a role that I need you for. Do you think you can help me? What? I'm asking if you can play a role in the movie. You're asking me to act. That's right, are you interested? The two of them spoke for 30 minutes. Noon. The film crew was on their lunch break. Zhong Yi came over in high spirits and took a boxed lunch to eat together with everyone. Yao Jintsai was surprised. Did you manage to get someone? Zhong Yi smiled. I found a person. Jiang Hanwei asked, who? Zhong Yi said, you'll know when he arrives. Surely not, right? Ha Chichi exclaimed, he's really coming? Zhong Yi nodded. It's settled. An actor asked, so who is it, director Ha? Ha Chichi did not know whether to laugh or cry. You guys definitely can't guess who it is. Later that afternoon. 1.30 p.m. When that, that person hurried down to the filming location on a private jet, when his figure appeared in front of everyone, all of the film crew members were dumbfounded. That person suavely waved. Hi, Teacher Zhong, I'm here. Zhong Yi stood up and went to welcome him respectfully. 
Thank you for coming to save the day. That person laughed and said, I'm a good friend, right? Zhong Yi shook his hand. I owe you one. That person looked to be around 20 years old or so. He wasn't considered handsome, nor was he ugly. He wasn't someone from the entertainment circle. He wasn't a professional actor. However, everyone on set knew who he was. So it's him? I'm gonna faint. What's with this? This. He was known by many names. Boss Qian Jr. China's richest son. China's husband. China's son-in-law. The entire film crew was dumbfounded. No one had expected Zhong Yi to get this person. Chapter 1634, who's the real special forces operator here? The actors of the two worlds were different. So naturally, the movie wouldn't be exactly the same either. For example, there were some flashback scenes of Wolf Warrior 1's female lead, Long Xiaoyun, in the movie. This role was still a very important one, but as Zhong Yi was unable to find a female actress who was as unique as Yunnan 1, he decided to get Dong Shanshan to play the role instead. Even so, Shanshan had her own valiant bearing after putting on the military uniform that Zhong Yi found to be very suitable. Then there was also the role of the spoiled brat who was the son of the owner of an African factory. In Zhong Yi's previous world, even though Wu Jing Tu had cast the male idol, Zhong Han III, in this role, the original person he had hoped to play the character was actually Wang Sikong. However, due to various reasons, Wang Sikong for did not come on board the movie. In the end, he could only get a male idol. But in this world, Zhong Yi ended up getting the son of China's richest man to play the character. Even though Boss Qian Jr. was not a professional actor, he was still a true blue affluent second generation. He would definitely be able to bring the true flavor of that in his role and play it better than a professional actor could. Besides, with his status as China's husband, his popularity was definitely much higher than most celebrities. As such, it sometimes depended on luck when it came to casting the right actor in a role. The stars had to align. Boss Qian Jr. Dong Shanshan. Yao Jiantsai. Jiang Hanwei. Ak. Zhong Yi was very happy with this cast. This was the perfect cast to him. The next day. Cut. Very good, this will do. After this set of scenes are done, get ready, everyone. We'll be heading to the barracks tomorrow. The dialogue scenes were more or less finished. All that was left were the fight scenes. But to film the fight scenes, the actors would require some training. Some movies would simply require the actors to fight each other with some simple props, and then add a tank in during post-production to complete the scene. However, Zhong Yi didn't want to do that. Since he was going to make the movie, he might as well be detailed. So he was prepared to use real tanks and guns for the production. As such, this made it even more demanding on the role that Zhong Yi was playing. Therefore, after they finished filming here, Zhong Yi started to play the lottery draw. He opened up the game rings interface and activated the lucky halo, Ultra. What he needed most were skills that would be useful in the production of his movie. One draw. Two draws. Three draws. Firearms Marksmanship Skill Experience Book, times 212, Tank Driving Skill Experience Book, times 67, Fruit of Strength, times 21. Zhong Yi was very happy to receive these. Firearms? Tanks? These were exactly what he needed. Moreover, the number of skill experience books he received were quite a lot too. Although he had eaten a lot of the fruits of strength before, no one would think there could be too much. The next day. Early in the morning. A part of the film crew were getting ready for their trip to Africa. Another group of actors who were involved in the fight scenes were brought to a military region by Zhong Yi. A sentry put his hand out and stopped them. Show your identification. Zhong Yi rolled down his car window. I'm looking for Commander Fang. The sentry recognized Zhong Yi and felt a little agitated. However, he still made a call to check. A minute later, he quickly raised the barrier and let the convoy pass. In the barracks. On the drill grounds. The commander came out personally with a squad to welcome them. Fellow Zhong. Old Fang, why have you put on weight again? 
Did I? I remember you were still quite slim when I saw you two years ago. You must have been sitting around in your office, right? No good words ever come out of your mouth, you scoundrel. Ha ha, have you prepared the drill grounds for us? It's all been arranged. I've even found you the instructors too. They're all special forces soldiers in our military command. All right, I'll have to trouble you with some of my people for the coming days. I mainly require them to train their firearms handling and action sequences. Oh yes, where are the guns and tanks that I requested? It's easier to find the guns, but the tanks are a no-go. Hey, didn't we already agree on it? I thought you only needed tanks that had been scrapped. We have those, and many film productions request that from us. But how am I supposed to lend you a tank that is still in service? If you feel that the scrap tanks look too fake, you can add some special effects. Isn't that what everyone else is doing? Who would use a real tank anyway? Nonsense, do you think it doesn't cost money to add VFX? Hurry up and get them. If you're thinking of going into a tank to have a look and fiddle around as you please, I can allow you aboard any of the main battle tanks that are here in my military command. Your status is different since you're not considered an outsider. But I can't allow it to be used for the movie since this involves military secrets. I don't need the MBTs. Just get me a few tanks that will be decommissioned soon but can still be driven around. I'm not picky, old fang, so you've definitely got to help me out with this. I have great use for them. Even if I give them to you, you won't know how to drive them. Just get me the tanks and you'll find out. During his years at the research institute, Zhong Yi had a lot of dealings with people in the military. Commander Fang was one of them, and their relationship was quite good. This was why he could speak without reservations with him. If it were anyone else who came to borrow some tanks to use in a movie production, Commander Fang would definitely ignore them. However, Zhong Yi's status was different, and face had to be given to him. When the people saw this situation, their hearts turned cold. Zhong Yi had his way around the barracks. In the morning, the training officially began. The instructors brought the trainees over. Have any of you fired a gun before? Jiang Hanwei replied, I've practiced firing them a few times before. Boss Qian Jr. smiled and said, I've been going to the shooting range since I was 10. Jack said in English, I have my own guns at home. The other American actors also smiled and said, guns are not illegal in America. The instructor nodded and said frostily, okay, then let's give it a try. At the range. Bang bang bang. Bang bang bang. The firing of the guns was deafening. Ring 6. Ring 3. Miss. Miss. Ring 3. Someone was reporting the scores out loud. The instructor shook his head lightly. You call this having used a gun before? With such standards, none of you are even at one-tenth the level of an ordinary soldier. He picked up a gun. Turned around and fired. Ring 9. Ring 9. Ring 10. Ring 9. Everyone watched in shock. Quite a few special forces soldiers were standing nearby, watching and laughing. The instructor put down the gun. And the way you hold the gun when you shoot, your stances, all of you fail. Starting from today, I will teach you how to handle a gun and instructor Lee will coach you on hand-to-hand -hand combat. I don't care whether you're actors or celebrities, or who brought you here. As long as you're in my house, you will have to do everything according to the standards of military training. Boss Chien Jr. picked on that. Wouldn't it do as long as we know how to use a gun? Jiang Hanwei said, you mean we're going to do this for real? The instructor said coldly, this was fellow Zhong's request. If you have any doubts, please go and look for him. The training began. Under the scorching sun, the actors couldn't help but feel miserable. Zhong Yi and the film crew stood there watching. Ha Chichi gave a wry smile and said, Director Zhong, can they really handle such training? Zhong Yi said, they've got to do it even if they can't stand it. Some of the scenes we shoot have to look realistic. It might be easy to just get a few prop guns and film the scene, but it will be obvious that they're fake. The loading of the magazine, the shooting, all of these actions have to be done professionally. 
There are a lot of gunfights and fight scenes to be edited in post, so how can they not train? Little Wang said in worry, I'm only afraid that China's husband will quit the cast. Zhang Zhuo was also terrified of that happening. Yeah, he's been spoiled since childhood and even takes his father's private jet whenever he travels. Furthermore, doesn't everyone in China know about his temper? Which celebrity in the entertainment circle hasn't been scolded by him before? If he really decides to quit the movie, there's nothing we can do about it. Ha Chichi was a little bewildered. Come to think of it, Boss Qian Jr. doesn't treat anyone with courtesy except for director Zhong, right? Zhong Yi laughed. I know his father. Little Wang said, ah, so that's why. Boss Qian Jr. was indeed very polite to Zhong Yi. This was because he knew that he didn't need to care about the other celebrities in the entertainment circle, since his family had a share of the entertainment industry with their entertainment companies and movie theater chain. This was why he did not have to give face to any of them. But it was different for Zhong Yi. Be it the identity of Zhong Yi's wife, or the status of Zhong Yi as a Nobel Prize winner, or the relationship between Zhong Yi and his father, he would have to treat him with courtesy at all times. Zhong Yi was the only person to be personally welcomed by his father out in the yard of their house when he went over to visit them. Moreover, the entire world knew that his father, Qian Haitao, was a fan of Zhong Yi's calligraphy too, and Zhong Yi's preface to the Orchid Pavilion was still up on the walls of their home. Other than his father, no one in the family could touch it. Noon. The actors were drenched in sweat and nearly dehydrated. Zhong Yi came out from the shade at this time. Get some rest. The instructor nodded. Take a break. Jiang Hanwei gulped down two bottles of water. Boss Qian Jr. collapsed into a chair and didn't get up. Zhong Yi said, Great work, everyone. Please endure it. Our film crew will be headed to Africa tomorrow to shoot some scenes and won't be back for some time. I'll need you all to continue training until I'm back to shoot the scenes in China. I also hope that by the time I'm back, I'll be able to see everyone's improvement and results. Jiang Hanwei was much older and couldn't really bear this. How many days will you be away? Zhong Yi said, if everything goes smoothly, about 10 to 14 days. If progress is slow, maybe an entire month. Boss Qian Jr. got a little cranky. Director, if I may say something, you keep telling us to practice this and that, yet you as the main lead have not been practicing at all. Zhong Yi was taken aback. I don't need to practice. Boss Qian Jr. was dumbfounded. Why don't you need to practice? Nearby, the instructor and special forces soldiers all looked at him. Yak looked at him. Jiang Hanwei blinked. That's right. Why don't you need to practice? Zhong Yi shrugged without saying a word. He calmly walked to the shooting range. Looking down, he picked up a gun. Then he swapped magazines and reloaded before raising the gun to take aim. Bang 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 bang. The soldier reported the scores in shock. Ring 10. Ring 10. Ring 10. Ring 10. There were a total of seven shots. All of them hit the bullseye. Boss Chien Jr. Nearly fell out of his chair. Jiang Hanwei was dumbfounded. Jack was dumbfounded. Ha Chichi was dumbfounded. The instructor was dumbfounded. The special forces soldiers were dumbfounded. Commander Fang, who was standing in the distance, was also dumbfounded. The entire drill grounds were silent. After putting down the gun, Zhong Yi slowly walked back and spread his hands, saying, I told you I didn't need any practice. Boss Qian Jr. exclaimed, Heck. You're amazing. In the distance, the rolling of tank treads suddenly rumbled, making a lot of noise. For old tanks that had already been decommissioned slowly drove over. The sound attracted everyone's attention. Ha Chichi, Little Wang, and many of the others were seeing a real tank for the first time. They were a little awed. They finally understood why Zhong Yi had insisted on using a real tank. A real tank and a tank that was added in with VFX were clearly different. The tanks came to a stop. The tank crew crawled out of it. The soldiers saluted. Reporting in, Commander. The mission is complete. Commander Fang acknowledged them. 
Then he turned to look at Zhong Yi. Will these do? Zhong Yi was overjoyed. If you had something this good, you should have brought them out sooner. Why did you keep dancing around the subject? Commander Fang said in a speechless manner, even if I brought them out, you wouldn't know how to operate them. But in the next instant, Zhong Yi walked up and touched a tank affectionately. Then he leaped up and got into the cockpit of the tank. Under the stunned gazes of everyone, the tank suddenly started moving after several seconds. The tank rolled along the drill grounds for dozens of meters before drifting and coming to a perfect stop. Zhong Yi opened the hatch and popped out. Not bad, I'll take these. Everyone was extremely confused. Commander Fang's jaw had dropped. Boss Qian Jr. was dumbfounded. Ha Chichi nearly vomited blood. The instructor and many of the special forces soldiers were also stunned by what they were seeing. What the heck? You know how to drive a tank? And you can even hecking drift it? Then they thought about Zhong Yi's marksmanship and remembered how Zhong Yi seemed to have flown a civilian aircraft before as well. These special forces soldiers even started to suspect that Zhong Yi could drive an aircraft carrier away if they got him one. What kind of person was this? Are you the special forces operator or are we the special forces operators? Ads by Pub Future Chapter 1635, a very scary Chinese film crew. Soon after. All right, I'll be off then. Okay. Everyone, train hard. Ah, okay. Oh yes, old Fang, teach them how to load the tank shells as well. All right, I got it. Don't worry, just leave them to me. Thanks. Then Zhong Yi left with the film crew. Boss Qian Jr. Jiang Hanwei, Jack, and some of the American actors couldn't help but stare in awe. The rest of the special forces soldiers were also dumbfounded. Everyone's eyes were fixated on Zhong Yi and the film crew's cars as they drove out of the barracks. It wasn't until they left that the group of people finally came back around. Looking at the target shot full of tens, and then looking at the tank that had drifted to a stop, they realized how infuriating it was to compare people. Ricky sighed, the director is ridiculous. Dolby wiped his sweat off. This marksmanship, even our SEAL teams are probably no better than this. And the tank, can it even drift like that? Jack said in a speechless manner, what does he not know? Ricky said, the director must have specially trained in these areas. He's a military expert who is also involved in the development of military weapons, so it's very normal for him to be familiar with such weapon systems. When he heard the words, military expert, Boss Chien Jr. nearly wanted to curse and swear. Dolby forced a smile. That's right. If we compare martial arts, the director would probably fare much worse than us. Jack said, he doesn't need to know much about martial arts since we're just filming a movie. All the moves are fake and just for show. They're all choreographed fights, although I'm looking forward to sparring with Zhong Yi. When he gets back, the scenes left to shoot will all be action scenes. It'd be good to get to know each other's skills in advance so that we can try to avoid injuring the director. Boss Chien Jr. turned eager and said, when he's back, I also want to spar with him. The instructor for hand-to-hand -hand combat said, then you will all have to practice hard in the coming days. Jiang Hanwei said in a speechless manner. It's useless even if we practice hard. Boss Chien Jr. looked over. It's useless? Jiang Hanwei asked them, you guys want to spar with him? Yeah. Dak said. Dolby also said with a laugh, we can't beat him at shooting, nor do we know how to drive a tank. But we're action stars, and me, Ricky, and the others started out as stuntmen. What danger have we not been through? We've been sparring with real knives and guns all this time, so we definitely won't do worse than the director. They were very confident in their skills. Jiang Hanwei rolled his eyes. Then go ahead and try him. They didn't catch the true meaning in Jiang Hanwei's words and even very eagerly tried out a few moves. Firing weapons. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. Loading tank shells. Their daily training began. Several days later. Africa. In the savannah. There was a tense atmosphere surrounding the film crew. This was because there were several fearsome lions in a cage not far away. 
Zhong Yi stood there and kept reminding, today's scene is very dangerous. I'll repeat myself again. Sophia, the rest of the crew, all of you must watch out for your safety. Even though the animal trainers are around, that doesn't mean no accidents can happen when the cage is opened. So once the cameras start rolling, I want all of you to be ready to run for your lives. If the situation does not seem right, don't wait for me to shout, cut. I want everyone to run to the safety zone, understand? Understood. Got it, director. Everyone answered in a weak voice. The female lead, Sophia, was in the jeep and constantly trying to control her breathing. Many of the cameramen looked pale as a sheet. Only the actress who was about to face the lions looked much calmer than everyone else. Zhong Yi got into the car and looked at her. Are you going to be fine? Sophia forced a smile. I think I can handle it. Zhong Yi said, Are you ready? I am, director. Sophia inhaled. Zhong Yi nodded. Do you know why I chose you out of so many mixed race actresses? Sophia was taken aback. She shook her head and said, Honestly, I don't know. Zhong Yi smiled and said, It's because you're ballsy. Sophia said, Huh? Zhong Yi added in a whisper, The main reason is that your asking price is low. Sophia chuckled. Only then did Zhong Yi shout to the outside, This set of scenes is very dangerous, so let's aim to finish it in two takes. All right, let's try the first take. The cage was opened. The lions were let out. When everything was ready, the animal trainers left. The cameras started rolling. Two people were speaking their lines. Sophia opened the door angrily and stepped out of the car. The camera followed her, and everything up to here was perfectly going according to script. However, at this moment, something unexpected happened. For some reason, one of the lions suddenly turned its head to look at Sophia before charging forward. The safety distance set between the beasts and the crew was 50 meters. However, the lion was too quick. Before anyone could react, the lion had already sprinted 20 meters and was getting closer and closer to Sophia. Everyone panicked. Tong Fu carried the camera and ran. The employee who was responsible for the fill lighting got so afraid that he screamed. The animal trainers ran over while hollering. The other crew members scattered and flusteredly got into the cars to avoid danger. Ha Chichi yelled, run. Jongs were roared, Sophia. Sophia was braver than most actresses. But even if she was brave, she was still a woman. She blanched. She shouted out a vulgarity she had learned from Zhong Yi in recent days. Heck your sister! Then she turned around and started running, but tripped over, which caused her to be even slower in getting out of the way. Save her! Quickly, save her! Ah! We're done for! Everyone was in a state of panic. At this critical moment, someone sprang out of a car. It's Director Zhong. Director Zhong, be careful. Don't come out. Run. Run. Sophia, get up. Sophia leaped off the ground. That lion was closing in. When the other lions behind saw this, they turned their heads and looked at Sophia. Then they padded over. Zhong Yi stepped in front of Sophia at this moment. Director. Sophia was very happy to see him and she nearly cried. In the blink of an eye, the lion pounced. Zhong Yi stared coldly at it and raised his right hand, imbuing some concealed power into his palm. The moment the lion pounced at Zhong Yi, he moved his feet in the pattern of a Taiji fish one and instantly shifted himself to the left side of the lion. Without any hesitation, he struck his palm onto the lion's body. Bam! It was a soft sound. In fact, it was so soft that no one could hear it. But the next second, that majestic lion trembled as a force traveled through it, and it slammed down onto its side. It slid on the ground for a full two meters. Zhong Yi had slapped it right into a bushed area. Sophia's jaw dropped. Ha Chichi was staring with wide eyes. Little Wang was so shocked that her jaw dropped. The animal trainers who were running over nearly tripped over themselves. What the hell? What kind of strength is that? A lion? It was sent flying? With a slap? 
Silence. The entire film crew fell silent. The entire savannah was silent. Then they saw the lion shaking as it laboriously climbed to its paws. Its eyes glared hate at John Yi. With a loud roar, it looked as though it wanted to attack again. John Yi simply said one word, scram. The lion suddenly turned timid and gave a weak growl. Then it spiritlessly turned its head and padded away. When the rest of the lions saw this, they also slowly turned their heads away. They were behaving like they hadn't seen anything. Zhang Yi turned around and pulled Sophia to her feet. Into the car. As Sophia's knee was injured, she limped along and followed Zhang Yi into the car. The moment the door closed, everyone in the crew could finally heave a sigh of relief. Zhang Yi said in concern, Where are you hurt? I'm fine. Sophia said gratefully, Thank you. Thank you. Zhang Yi smiled and said, You're welcome. You're with us to film a movie, and I was the one who brought you guys here, so I have to guarantee everyone's safety. No matter how I brought you over from China, I have to bring you back all the same. That's my responsibility. Two other cars drove over. Hachichi said from inside the other car, Director Zhong, how is she? Zhong Yi said with a smile, fortunately, everything is fine. Little Wang's eyes were red. You guys scared us to death. Meanwhile, the rest of the film crew and the African employees were looking at Zhong Yi with a terrified gaze. They had a look in their eyes that suggested they had seen an immortal of some kind. The scene that happened just now was beyond their comprehension and all common sense. They had never seen something like that before. Zhong Yi asked Sophia, Can you continue to act? Sophia nodded firmly. Yes. Zhong Yi said, All right, let's do another take. Hachichi said, We're still going? Zhong Yi instructed, We must guarantee that there will be no mishaps this time. Understood. Hachichi went over to get everything set up and in order. Zhong Yi then looked down and helped Sophia spray some medicine onto her leg. Today's scenes have to be shot and completed. There's no way to stop, so let's hang in there a little more. After this set of scenes is done, we'll stop work. There's no need to be afraid, I'm here. Sophia nodded. Okay, director. Twenty minutes later. The prep work was complete. When the cameras started rolling again, the second take went underway. This time, when Sophia got out of the car, everyone in the film crew took a deep breath as their hearts leaped into their throats. They were all afraid that another accident would happen. The lions turned around to look again. Sophia was very tense. But this time, everyone noticed that Zhong Yi, who was sitting in the car, was glaring daggers at the lions. The lions looked at Sophia, then looked at Zhong Yi again before quietly turning back again. They went back to doing whatever they were doing. The lion that was beaten by Zhong Yi even let out a whimper. The African employees looked at one another. The lions are afraid. Jesus! Who is this? What kind of person is he? I've worked in the savannah for so many years now, but I've only heard of lions eating people. I've never heard of lions being scared of people. Does a person who can fight a lion with their bare hands really exist? I've seen something unbelievable today. This Chinese film crew is really too scary. On this day, a film crew from China had given the local African people an indelible and terrifying memory. Meanwhile, on the other side of the planet, at the barracks drill grounds, Boss Chien Jr., Jack, and several of the others were practicing hand to hand combat. Jiang Hanwei had answered a call. He was stunned for a while before walking back over to the group and saying, I just received news. The film crew just met with a mishap in Africa. Jack was startled. What happened? Everyone crowded around anxiously. What mishap? Jiang Hanwei said, a lion tried to attack Sophia and there was nearly a tragedy. Boss Chien Jr. said, what? Did she get hurt? Jiang Hanwei said, no, she wasn't hurt. Ricky said in surprise, she got so lucky? Jiang Hanwei looked at him and said, it wasn't luck. It was Zhong Yi who sent the lion flying with a palm strike. What did you say? Boss Chien Jr. was stunned. Several of the nearby Special Forces soldiers were also dumbfounded. 
sent flying with a palm strike? Jack was speechless. Dolby was speechless. Everyone at the drill grounds was speechless. Jiang Hanwei suddenly got reminded of something. Oh yes, which of you said that you wanted to spar with him? Boss Chien Jr. said, huh? Dolby blinked. No one said anything like that. Ricky kept shaking his head, I didn't say it either. Did you say it? Dak shook his head firmly. No. They were going crazy. Spar? Spar your sister. You can even hecking send the king of the savannah flying with a palm strike? Who the heck would want to spar with you? Even the several of us combined couldn't hecking slap a lion like you did. Chapter 1636, Wolf Warrior 2 wraps up. Many days later. In China. At a filming location. Bang. A loud crash rang out. Ah. Director Zhong. Director. Where are the paramedics? Get the first aid kit over here. Director, how do you feel? During the filming of the tank battle scene, due to a staff member being insufficiently prepared and making a mistake, Zhong Yi got injured once again. This was the umpteenth time that Zhong Yi was injured on the set of Wolf Warrior 2 since production began. It happened so many times that even the film crew had lost count of it. Treatment. Dressing. Taking care of the injury. After a great deal of fussing, Zhong Yi was finally able to sit upright with some aid. He waved it off and said, I'm fine, don't worry. Jack, get some rest first. We still have the last few scenes to shoot, so let's finish it up in one go. Ha Chichi disagreed. You should recuperate first. Zhongs were also said, yeah, we can't continue filming. But Zhong Yi said, we're filming an action movie. How can you expect there to be no injuries? Don't make such a big fuss over it. Jack said, I watched the footage that we captured earlier and I think it's good enough. No, the actions were not done properly. Zhong Yi had seen it as well, but he wasn't satisfied with what they had. As Zhong Yi was the executive director, no one dared to say anything more. Actually, during the filming process, a lot of the scenes were captured pretty well. At least, the film crew thought so. Even Jack and several of the American actors also said that the quality had already reached the level of Hollywood. They felt that there wasn't a need to risk it by reshooting the scenes again because many of the shots were very dangerous to film. However, Zhong Yi did not agree. As long as he felt that the scenes had flaws, he wouldn't accept it and would insist on shooting them until he thought they were perfect. This had always been Zhong Yi's work ethic. He would either do it to his best or not do it at all. He wouldn't allow the Wolf Warrior 2 of his previous world to not even be able to cause a wave over here. He had to make his version worthy of this Chinese movie's name by recreating it in this world his way. Half an hour later. They continued shooting. Hachichi whispered to Jack, take it easy. Don't be too tough when you fight him. Jack nodded solemnly. I understand. Take what easy. Zhong Yi heard that and said, just fight as you normally would. Jack said, but you're, Zhong Yi smiled. Same rule applies. No fake moves, let's fight for real. Zhongs were shouted, you're still bleeding. Zhong Yi looked down. Nice, we can save on the color dye for the makeup. Seeing Zhong Yi limping, the film crew was very speechless. Fight for real? How are you going to fight for real in your state? But when the cameras started rolling, and when Jack and Zhong Yi started fighting, everyone knew they had gotten it wrong. Jack was even more surprised. Bam! Jack punched. Zhong Yi dodged sideways and kicked in response. Jack used his leg to block it. However, Jack ended up paling. A few blows later, the entire film crew was astonished. Only now did they realize that even though Zhong Yi was injured, even if his bleeding had not completely stopped, none of the action stars on set could outfight him, including Jiang Hanwei, who was resting off to the side. Everyone in China knew that Jiang Hanwei had real kung fu and was a true martial artist since he hailed from the Huishan sect. So in the eyes of many of the common folk and even those in the industry, Jiang Hanwei was someone they saw as the most skilled at kung fu in China. This was the limitation of their interaction with a martial artist, after all. 
although there had also been constant rumors that Zhong Yi knew Kung Fu, no one had seen it for themselves before. The previous incident in which he smashed two Korean bulletproof car windows were also thought of by the media to have been some trickery, or technique that he used. But it was only now that they finally understood that Zhong Yi also knew real Kung Fu. In fact, it was a very high level of Kung Fu too. As for how high level it was? The crew members had secretly asked Jiang Hanwei this question before, Teacher Jiang, if you and Director Zhong got into a one-on-one -on -one fight and both of you gave everything you had, who would win? At that time, Jiang Hanwei answered, I won't fight him. Everyone in the crew was startled. Why not? Jiang Hanwei said, because I can't beat him. It was at that time that the crew members finally understood that Director Zhong was actually much stronger than Jiang Hanwei. It was as if the level of his kung fu was unfathomable. On location. There was the constant sound of fighting. Cut. This shot won't do. Jack, didn't you eat? Another round. Cut. Another take. It was very tiring to be a director. It was very tiring to be an actor. But what did it feel like when one was the director and the male lead as well? The suffering and hard work was probably only understood by Zhong Yi. On this day. In the morning. Everyone in the film crew was present. Dong Shanshan, Yao Jintsai, Boss Chien Jr., everyone who could be here was here. They were all very excited as they watched Zhong Yi, who was still filming. Everyone had a different expression on their face. All of a sudden, Zhong Yi shouted, Cut! He heaved a long sigh of relief and smiled. That will do. The entire film crew burst into cheering. Jack fell to the ground, feeling dead tired. Zhong Yi also sat down heavily and declared loudly, I hereby announce, Wolf Warrior 2 has wrapped up filming. We're done. Awesome. We've wrapped up. We're done with the shoot. We finally finished filming. Everyone has worked hard. Director Zhong has worked hard. It's finished. Why do I kinda wanna cry? Mother Hecker, me too. Everyone has really suffered these past two months. Some of them roared. Some of them really started crying. They had tasted suffering and bittersweet moments over the course of filming. Zhong Yi had been injured a dozen times. He suffered minor injuries eight times and serious injuries four times. Jack had suffered a spine injury and couldn't even stand up at one point. Many of the actors and crew members had fallen seriously ill. They had been attacked by lions in the savannah. They had been pushed around by African rebels with guns. They could still vividly remember everything that had happened, and it was an experience they didn't want to go through again in their lifetimes. They had suffered too much, but they still managed to get past everything with Zhong Yi's guidance. Many of them did not even expect that they would really finish filming this movie. Hugs. Joy. Tears. It was a jubilant scene. After catching his breath, Zhong Yi stood up from the ground with great difficulty and went around embracing everyone and thanking them. Thank you, you did a great job. Thank you, Boss Chien Jr., you did a great job. Great work, Ak. Great work, old Yao. But every one of them knew that it was Zhong Yi who had done the best and worked the hardest. When the lions attacked, he was there. When the rebels held them hostage, he was there. When a dangerous explosion happened on the set, he was there. Some of them might have experienced danger on one or two occasions, but it was different for Zhong Yi. He was the executive director and the male lead as well so he had experienced all the dangers and hardships during the filming process. At a lot of dangerous moments, Zhong Yi even stepped forward to protect everyone. Besides being the film's producer, director, screenwriter, lead actor, and choreographer, he also had to take on the role of bodyguard. Zhong Yi had really given a lot to the movie. Jack gave him a bear hug. Zhong, it's been quite the pleasure working with you. Same. Zhong Yi smiled and said, I've always felt that you American actors would behave like divas. I didn't expect you to be such a professional. It has changed a lot of my views on things. Jack smiled and said, I always thought that there weren't any good actors in China and that a lot of them depended on their looks to earn a living. You've also changed my opinion of Chinese movies. 
before coming to China, we never thought that there would be such an impressive director and actor like you. Zhong, I have a feeling that within 10 years, you'll become a world-famous superstar. Zhong Yi said, I'll be banking on your words then. Boss Qian Jr. laughed and said, are we going to celebrate? I'll play host. Zhong Yi gave it some thought. We can hold it when the box office earnings come out. Boss Qian Jr. said, all right. Zhong Yi looked at him. What about the distribution of the movie? Boss Qian Jr. patted his chest. I'll speak to my dad. There won't be any problems. The filming of the movie wrapped up. The actor's work was basically done. However, the movie still wasn't completed. There was still a lot of work waiting for Zhong Yi. The post-production. The VFX. The editing. Zhong Yi's battle had just begun. Chapter 1637, Zhong Yi, King of Posturing. On this day. In China. On Weibo. I heard that the filming of Commando 2 has already wrapped up. Yeah, Hollywood productions move so quickly. The commercial films of Hollywood have an ecosystem of their own when it comes to movie productions, and the process is like a pipeline of sorts. Besides, this is the second movie of the franchise, so of course they wrapped up filming that quickly. It's totally unlike our domestic movie productions that sometimes take up to a year or two to finish. In the end, their box office performances don't even have the results to show for all that effort. Hi, there's really no comparison at all. Commando 2 will be out in theaters soon. Calling for a strong boycott of that movie by everyone. Yes, based on the claims that Wilson made, we must boycott it. Let him have zero box office earnings in China. I heard a rumor that Zhong Yi's movie has wrapped up filming too. What? So fast? Is face smacking Zhong on steroids? Didn't Wolf Warrior 2 start filming half a month later than Commando 2? Zhong Yi is really too hecking fast when it comes to filming things. Ha ha ha, this should be considered slow. Remember in the name of the people? That fellow only took 10 days to finish shooting it. That's a TV series with over 40 episodes. Is he really thinking of challenging Hollywood? Supporting Zhong Yi? Heck them up. Damn, can he really beat them? Who cares if he can win or not, just fight them. I'm looking forward to teacher Zhong's debut film appearance. Noon. Back at home. The welcome banquet had been prepared in advance. The entire family had gathered here today, and Cece was even lying on her belly at the first floor window, looking outside eagerly and listening for the sounds of a car. A car drove over. Cece shouted in excitement, Daddy. It's Daddy. When the door opened, Cece clambered out. Zhong Yi had just gotten out of the car when he saw his daughter running to him. His heart melted. He sprinted over to pick her up, laughing loudly as he raised her in the air and spun around a few times. Then he lowered his head and gave Cece a dozen kisses. Daddy! My dear, I missed you so much. Daddy, I missed you too. Good girl, good girl. Behind her, his family had also come outside. Wu Ziqing looked at him and said with a smile, you've gotten a little tanner. His mother stared at him and said, how is this just a little tanner? He's as tan as a black dog's bollocks. If not for the car's license plate number, I wouldn't have recognized you. Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. The sun was really strong in Africa. Li Qingqin said, why did you just get back? His father also said, yeah, Yao Jiansai and Shan Shan both returned much earlier than you. Zhong Yi sighed. I was outside of Beijing all this while. After the filming wrapped up, I remained with the VFX firm to supervise their work. Then there was also the editing work to do. I couldn't leave it to the others, so I had to handle it myself. Luckily, it's all done now, ha ha. Ziqing, I sent the film's footage to the SARFT this morning. Get someone to quickly approve it for me. After that, there are only the publicity, distribution, and screening work left. Everyone will be able to watch it soon. Li Qingqin asked in concern, how did it go? Zhong Yi said as he followed them into the house, holding his daughter in his arms, when we just started rolling the cameras, this bro still had some reservations and felt a little unsure about it.
After all, it was my first time making a movie, so I didn't know how it would turn out. But after filming wrapped up, when the VFX were added in and the film's editing was completed, ha ha, don't mention Commando 2, even if Hollywood released a few more blockbusters this year, I would still freaking challenge them. Wu Chang He curled his lips. His family members were also quite skeptical. As it was time for lunch, the entire family sat down to eat. Li Qingqin smiled and said, you haven't been back in two months. Why don't you share a drink with your father-in-law? Zhang Yi waved it off. I can't drink today. I still have a press conference to hold in the evening. You must have suffered a lot this time? Wu Ziqing asked. Zhang Yi sighed. It was no big deal, no big deal at all. His mother muttered, you even went to Africa. Don't you know how chaotic it is over there? Aya, yeah, it was fine, Zhang Yi said, brushing it off. His father said, your mom is just worried that you'll fail. Wu Changhe rolled his eyes at that. Li Qingqin laughed. All parents are the same. Ever since the day Zhang Yi debuted, Zhang Yi's parents had been worried that their son would suffer. They were worried when he was with the radio station, they were worried when he was at Central TV, they were worried when he got banned by the SARFT, and they were worried when he quarreled with Japan and Korea. However, in which of those situations did this fellow even suffer once? Have you all ever seen him getting the short end of the stick? Worried that Zhang Yi would fail, this was a joke that would keep everyone laughing for an entire year. On the same night. The venue of the press conference. The live streaming equipment had already been set up, and all the reporters were waiting at the scene. The reporters from the Chinese newspapers, online media, and television stations had all descended like a swarm of bees. As too many people were in attendance and the organizers were not prepared for it, many of the reporters could not even get a seat. Even though around 20 chairs were added at the last minute, some reporters still had to stand in the aisles and behind the last row. It was such a crazy scene. There had never before been such a turnout for any of the movie press conferences in China. This was the current state of popularity that Zhang Yi had as an international star, and it further reflected the people's attention and interest for Zhang Yi's debut movie. Backstage. Ha Chichi reminded, there are still two minutes to go. Okay. Zhang Yi straightened his clothes. Zhang Zhuo smiled and said, this is the first promo run we're doing for Wolf Warrior 2, so maybe you should reveal some tidbits for the press. Whether the movie can get hype or not all depends on you now. Reveal some tidbits? Well, all right. Zhang Yi smiled. I understand. Ha Chichi checked her watch. It's time. Zhang Yi gathered everyone and said, let's go. Yao Jinsai wasn't here. Dong Shanshan wasn't here. Jiang Hanwei and the others were not here either. There were no actors present today. The press conference was going to be headed just by Zhang Yi and the main production team. When Zhang Yi and his team appeared, the media at the venue blew up. Director Zhang. How do you feel about your first time making a movie? Why is it called Wolf Warrior 2? When are you going to film the prequel? How much money was invested into this production? The reporters were all shouting out their questions. Zhang Yi smiled and answered them one by one. The press conference was streamed live as well and countless citizens were watching it with anticipation. From the investment sum, to the filming process, to the actors, Zhang Yi described it all to everyone. He also bragged to the media about how good the movie was. What else was needed for a movie's initial press conference? Nothing but some self-confidence and good old posturing would do. It was only through this that everyone would feel that your movie was going to be worth watching. In this way, everyone would start anticipating it and want to go to the theaters to catch the movie. This was something that Zhang Yi was very familiar with. He couldn't be more familiar with posturing. Once Zhang Yi started posturing, it never ended. The reporters barrage him with questions. The questions gradually shifted from the movie to Zhang Yi himself. A female reporter from Xinhua News asked, You're probably the celebrity with the highest net worth in China right now. But as everyone knows, you've never accepted a commercial appearance before, so how did you earn your money? Could you share some of the secrets to making money with ordinary people like us? The reporters laughed. 
they had thought that Zhong Yi would not answer this question. But to their surprise, Zhong Yi calmly answered, how to make money? I can talk a little about that. A lot of young people these days have goals in life. For example, it's not wrong to dream about becoming the richest person in the country and is a direction they can work towards. But it's better to set smaller goals first. He raised a finger and said something that would make all of the reporters at the venue and the people watching the live stream around China want to vomit blood. For example, I can aim to earn a 100 million first. Then, see how long it takes you to earn that amount of money. Are you planning to do it within three or five years? Once you reach your target, aim for the next goal of earning a billion or even 10 billion. Set smaller goals. A 100 million. 1 billion. 10 billion. Heck! Set smaller goals, your sister. Three years? Five years? I can't even earn a hundred million in my entire hecking lifetime. Standing next to him, even Ha Chichi, Zhong Zui, and the others could feel their legs sway a little as they nearly spewed. Another reporter said dumbfoundedly, but to people from ordinary families like us, but Zhong Yi answered, actually, I don't think I'm that rich either. I'm also from an ordinary family. Years have passed, but our family's lifestyle hasn't changed much at all, other than the house getting a little bigger. The reporters saw red. The netizen saw red. House getting a little bigger. That's a hecking villa, all right. Is that just a little bigger? And you're even claiming to be from an ordinary family? Your wife is a minister at the central publicity department. Ordinary family, your grandpa. The reporters were dumbfounded and just sat there, not knowing how to continue. Then a reporter from People's Daily finally broke the silence again. Teacher Zhong, can you tell us about the greatest mistake you've made? Zhong Yi gave it some thought and said, the greatest mistake in my life must be setting up Zhong Yi's studio. I had originally planned for it to be a small company and did not expect that there would be so many responsibilities. There are so many matters that I have to resolve on a daily basis, and they take up almost all of my time. Looking at the dumbfounded reporters, he said with a sigh, in my next life, if there is one, I wouldn't want to be a celebrity, nor would I want to step up onto the international stage. I just want to do my own thing and enjoy life. The reporters were going crazy. Heck your sister. Why don't you just die? Zhong's was lips were trembling. Ha Chichi couldn't bear to listen anymore. She hurriedly kicked him below the table. Little Wang was trying to hold back her laughter so much that she nearly teared up. Finally, another central TV reporter stood up to ask, Teacher Zhong, can you tell us about the most correct thing that you've done in your life? Or something that made you particularly proud? Ah, uh, like having such a good daughter? Or perhaps a beautiful wife? This was a very normal question. The reporters were all thinking that he couldn't possibly talk big this time. But to everyone's surprise, they underestimated Zhong Yi. They saw Zhong Yi shake his head with a solemn look. Actually, I'm not good with faces. I can't tell if someone's pretty or not. Frankly, when I was wooing my wife, it was mainly because her personality attracted me since I don't know if she's considered pretty or not. When he finished speaking, all of the reporters at the venue went crazy. The netizens around the country were all vomiting blood. Even vomiting blood wasn't enough to express the emotions they were feeling right now. Will you die if you don't posture? Will you? You don't know if Minister Wu is considered pretty or not. Heck your second grandma. Heck your third grandpa. You win, John Yi. You hecking win. On this day, all of China's citizens were left kneeling. On this day, Zhong Yi gained yet another nickname. King. Of. Posturing. Chapter 1638, American Film vs. Chinese Regulations. That night. At home. When Zhong Yi drove home, he saw the speechless looks of his family's faces. Dad, Mom, you still haven't left. Zhong Yi said with a smile. His father said angrily, Why do you always speak so recklessly? His mother also said angrily. Can you not brag for once? Huh? Zhong Yi chuckled and said, wasn't I just trying to promote the new movie? His mother stared at him. 
You're really good, huh? Aren't you afraid that your wife will punish you? Zhong Yi laughed, ha ha ha. You still dare to laugh? His mother was infuriated. From nearby, Wu Ziqing laughed. Mom, it's fine. Can't you see that he was just joking? However, Cece was having none of it. She had also watched the live stream together with her grandparents. She went right up to her father and tugged on his sleeve. Daddy, mommy is pretty. Mommy is pretty. Zhong Yi dotingly picked her up. That's right, your mommy is the most beautiful in the world. Only then was Cece satisfied. MHM. Wu Ziqing also smiled and patted her daughter on the head. Posturing was an art form. And today, Zhong Yi had performed it to perfection. Back in Zhong Yi's previous world, the netizens unanimously elected four people as the kings of posturing. These four people one were, Wang Jianlin Tu, the one who had nothing to his name. Ma Huateng III, the one who hailed from a normal family. Ma Yun IV, the one who regretted setting up Alibaba. Liu Qiangdong V, the one who doesn't know his wife is pretty. This was because these four people had all publicly talked about things that were so unbelievable that it shocked China's citizens. Each and every one of those words they uttered had been laughed at by the people of his previous world, with all kinds of screenshots, all kinds of emotes, and all kinds of ridicule aimed at them. And today, Zhong Yi had brought the famous words of these four people out to use at the press conference. As a result, Zhong Yi had become the king of posturing in this world overnight. There were absolutely no competitors at all. In China. Online. The netizens were all laughing non-stop. Heck. This fellow is too reckless with his speech. Ha 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 ha. Ayo, I'm dying of laughter. A small goal of a 100 million? I don't see any problems with that, buddy. This fellow is making me so angry that I want to laugh. If you're from an ordinary family? Then maybe we all should just die. Mother Hecker, not even the world can hold down this fellow anymore. He's really bragging to the heavens this time. This is the first time I've seen someone posture so shamelessly. You don't know that your wife is pretty. I can only give it to you when it comes to posturing. Foot, ha 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 ha. The reporters at the scene were all crying and didn't know how to respond. This is the first time I've seen a celebrity make a bunch of reporters not want to ask any further questions. This era's king of posturing has been born. The way he postures is refreshing. Does this fellow intend to drive everyone to their graves? Yeah. He's obviously hecking showing off. If I can have a wife as beautiful as that, I would die a happy man. I can't believe this fellow had the cheek to say that he doesn't know if his wife is pretty. Oh my god, I'm gonna faint. Why don't you just go to hell? Face smacking Jong is beyond redemption. That mouth of Zhong Yi's. Hi. This fellow weighs 60 kilograms, but 59 of them are in his mouth. Ridicule. Speechlessness. Hilarity. The four famous quotes from Zhong Yi's press conference instantly resounded throughout China. Emote packs converted from screenshots of the live stream by some meddlesome netizens went viral across the country, and were crazily forwarded by countless netizens. In an instant, China's netizens found themselves anticipating the screening of Wolf Warrior 2 even more. They wanted to find out why Zhong Yi had suddenly become so confident of himself. The media reports were also spreading like crazy. Zhong Yi has face blindness? Zhong Yi, I come from an ordinary family. Zhong Yi's advice to young people, earn a 100 million first. Zhong Yi's expressions go viral. Zhong Yi's new movie has gone viral even before it is screened. Online. Offline. The news spread everywhere. It had to be said that this press conference was indeed such a success. After all, Zhong Yi had held the press conference in order to promote the movie. As a result, Zhong Yi and Wolf Warrior 2 ended up dominating the headlines overnight as their topicalities were pushed right up to the top. The next day. Early in the morning. The celebrity goof group was very active. This had been the chat group for the top veteran celebrities of the Chinese entertainment circle years ago and was dying out. But ever since Zhong Yi's return, it had miraculously been revived. Ning Lan, at Zhong Yi are you up yet? 
Shu Han, Teacher Zhong, come and chat with us. I was doing a shoot yesterday and could only watch the press conference that you held last evening today. Ha 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 ha, it kept me laughing all morning. Amy, genuflecting to Lord Zhong. To everyone's surprise, Zhong Yi really appeared in the chat. Sorry for incurring your ridicule. Chen Guang, this is the first time I've encountered anyone promoting their movie in such a way. Fan Wenli, Zhong'e, that mouth of yours is beyond redemption. Zhong Yi, ha 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 at Yao Jinsai at Dong Shanshan it won't be long until the movie gets a release date. The promotions are already underway, so let's give our best. Dong Shanshan, bye. Yao Jinsai, ha ha, we can't posture as well as you did. Li Ku appeared. Wishing you a record box office earnings. John Yi, thanks, old Li. Li Xiaoxian sent a smiley face. We also helped you promote your new movie on our Weibo. Xiao Dong, I forwarded it this morning. Hua Dongfang, I forwarded it as well. All the best for your box office earnings. John Yi, thank you, everyone, thank you so much. Ning Lan said in an extorting tone, if the box office earnings reach 500 million, you'll have to treat us until you're broke. Another film director also popped into the chat. Ha ha, I agree. Zhong Yi smiled as he typed back, 500 million? Xu Han, there's still a chance of hitting that mark. Yao Jiantsai, I'll be satisfied with 300 million. In this world, in the mindset of China's citizens and the industry's people, a movie would be deemed quite good if it could cross 300 million in box office earnings. Even for Li Ku and several of the other big name directors in China, they wouldn't dare to claim that every one of their movies could surpass 500 million, much less for a new director like Zhong Yi. But clearly, Zhong Yi did not think this way. 300 million? 500 million? He found it too little even if it was 10 times that amount. This was hecking Wolf Warrior 2 they were talking about. The Wolf Warrior 2 that had made everyone in his previous world piss their pants. However, he did not say it publicly in the group. This was because the movie had not even been released yet. For now, he didn't dare to say such big words yet. If Wolf Warrior 2 somehow didn't work out in this world, he would be humiliated. After all, he did not make the first movie and jumped straight to filming the second movie. Anxiety. Anticipation. Excitement. He was in a very complicated mood right now. That same day, Zhong Yi had just returned home and did not take any further rest. He brought the film crew out to do more publicity work. Yao Jinsai, Jiang Hanwei, Dong Shanshan, Sophia, and Jack were also part of the team this time. Interviews. Appearing on television. Posting on Weibo. The promotional activities were in full swing. Meanwhile. In America. Commando 2's promotional activities were also launched around the world. Be it the Hollywood brand, Wilson's reputation, or the Commando franchise's influence, all of those had an immediate impact in hyping up the attention and anticipation of the movie fans of this world. The movie had already wrapped up filming. The publicity work and distribution of the movie quickly followed. The cinemas in the UK placed an importance on this blockbuster film. The cinemas in France filled their schedules with the movie. The Japanese theatres also gave the green light for it to be shown there. The Korean theatres were giving the movie a lot of publicity. The work on Commando 2 was progressing very smoothly in multiple countries around the world. All except for one country where it met with multiple obstacles. At Wilson's office. A white man came running in, huffing and puffing. Wilson said, how's the preparation for the distribution of the movie? The man said, it's going very well in the other countries. Wilson nodded. He he, that's great. The man immediately said, but it encountered some problems in China. What? Wilson frowned. It didn't get approved? The man said, yeah, it didn't. Their censorship board rejected it. They said that our movie has too many gory and violent scenes, so they didn't approve it. Wilson was floored. Gory? Gory my ass. The man said angrily, yeah, didn't a lot of Hollywood movies also get shown all the same in China? 
Wilson said, all the countries in the world approved it, all except for China. What are they trying to do? Although they'd never placed much priority on the Chinese film market, they still knew that the box office earnings there wouldn't be too bad. At the least, it would be the icing on the cake for them. Besides, who doesn't want to make more money? As such, even though Wilson had made those outrageous claims, he wasn't actually thinking of giving up on the Chinese market. Wilson clenched his teeth and said, edit the movie as per their requests and send it in for approval again. The white man sulked, understood. Two days later. Another piece of news came. Commando 2's second approval submission had been knocked back as well. This time, the reason given was, the movie's runtime was too long and didn't adhere to the Chinese requirements. The film crew of Commando 2 nearly blew their top. What do they mean? The movie's too long? This can even be a hecking reason? Holy shit! How can they call a movie with a two and a half hour runtime too long? What can we do now? Wilson decided, edit it again. Edit it according to their requests. Not long after, Commando 2 was rejected by the censors for the third time. Wilson said anxiously, how can it be possible for the movie to keep getting rejected for approval? What was the reason this time? The reporting staffer's face had turned green with anger. They said that our ticket price is too high and that it doesn't adhere to China's requirements, so we were told that we had to lower it. Wilson was very dumbfounded to hear that. Why didn't they just tell us everything in one go? Aren't they deliberately doing this? And what has the ticket price got to do with them? Do they have any say in that? The staffer wiped his sweat away and said, the Chinese censors have a say in everything. Wilson was so infuriated. They're taking it too far. Those goddamn Chinese regulations. Once. Thrice. Five times. Commando 2 kept getting rejected from showing in China. In the end, someone from the director's guild with knowledge of the matter quietly informed Wilson. This made Wilson see red. The director said, who oversees the approval of films in China? Wilson answered, the SARFT. The director continued, and who oversees the SARFT? Wilson answered, I think it's the central publicity department. The director asked, do you have any idea who Zhong Yi's wife is? Wilson was taken aback. Who is she? That person said, she's a minister at the central publicity department. Wilson and the Commando 2 film crew were floored. They finally realized what was happening behind the scenes. When they decided to use Zhong Yi to hype up their movie, they offended a lot of the citizens and leaders in China. Wilson nearly cursed out loud. Heck! A hooligan like Zhong Yi who dared to hit someone at the Nobel Prize award ceremony that was broadcast live actually managed to get a wife, and she was even a minister at the central publicity department. There must be a mistake somewhere, right? Chapter 1639, the global premiere date is announced. In China. The news spread. There was praise all over Weibo. Commando 2 was rejected for approval seven times? Because the movie's duration was too long? And the ticket price was too high? Ha 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 ha. Beautifully done. The SARFT is awesome. Foot, ha ha ha. I've got to give a like to the SARFT this time no matter what. Well done. This is in accordance with the public's opinion. How satisfying. The SARFT did really good this time. It's rare that the SARFT does something that makes everyone want to clap for them. The long reach of capitalism has fallen short again in front of our Chinese regulations. That Wilson basically asked for it by saying that he doesn't care much for the Chinese market. During the press conference, he mentioned that the Chinese film market wasn't good. That it was unregulated. That the box office earnings were low. Sure then, since you people don't hecking care about it. Then don't come. The Chinese market and our citizens don't welcome you either. So what if you're a famous Hollywood director? So what if Commando is a great movie franchise? So what if the entire world is giving you all face? Our Chinese people won't. Yeah, well said. Even if the movie manages to get a showing here, we will ensure that they go back with zero earnings. Supporting the SARFT. 
Go heck them up. This news has completely changed my impression of the SARFT. In the past, whenever the SARFT implemented its strict broadcast standards on imported foreign television dramas and movies, it would always make the people suffer. Many of the television series and movies that everyone wanted to watch did not get a chance to broadcast in China. When that happened, the netizens would always curse and swear at it. They felt that the SARFT was too harsh and making a fuss out of nothing, that they were being too intolerant. However, it was an unprecedented reaction this time as every netizen in the country was unanimously praising the SARFT for their action. Well stopped. Well rejected. And just like that, Commando 2 lost its chance to be shown in China. America. Hollywood. Quite a few directors from the Directors Guild were denouncing this. China is outrageous. How can they shut out Commando 2 like that? They're destroying the market this way. Wilson, you cannot just let it slide. We have to fight back. Opposing Hollywood. Where did they find the courage to do this? Isn't John Yee's new movie also showing soon? All right. We won't let him have it easy in the overseas markets either. Doesn't he intend to challenge Wilson? Isn't he thinking of competing with Hollywood? Heh, take a big step back. Even if his movie has a 0.01% chance of breaking out, as long as his overseas box office earnings are cut off, I want to see how he can fight this fight. Does he intend to depend on the Chinese film market that will at most bring him a few hundred million in earnings? What a joke! Commando 2 will surpass his movie with just two or three days of box office earnings. And that's just based on the box office earnings in America. We don't even need the global box office earnings to beat him. The Chinese market is only so big. Without the global box office to support it, he can't turn the tables. That's right. I'll contact my friend about this. I still have some influence in the industry to speak of. Wilson, I'll help you too. Thanks, everyone. Very quickly, many of Hollywood's people took action. Many people in Hollywood had always had disdain for Zhong Yi and China. China. At the film distribution company of Qian Haitao, the richest man in China. Zhong Yi and the company's representative were seated together. The representative said angrily, Director Zhong, there definitely won't be any problems with the movie's domestic scheduling, don't you worry about that. However, there are some problems with the overseas distribution. Zhong Yi said indifferently, why is that? The representative said, we have distribution channels in multiple countries as well as cooperative deals with their theaters. Although the relationships may not be that strong, we are still assured of getting some show times. However, a lot of people from Hollywood have suddenly shown up, including the investors of Commando 2 and people from their director's guild, and intervened with our overseas distribution of the movie. Many of the theater chains we had already negotiated with have all stated that they won't be importing Wolf Warrior 2 anymore. The overseas distribution has been ground to a halt as a result. If it goes on like this, our overseas showings will be so low that they could be negligible. This, Boss Chien Jr. was also around today. He banged the table and stood up. Heck! So they want to play such a shady game, huh? The representative said, they're obviously retaliating. But to their surprise, Zhong Yi laughed and said, it's fine. It's fine? The representative sounded a little startled. Boss Chien Jr. anxiously said, without the foreign box office sales, we will, are the other distribution plans going smoothly? Zhong Yi asked. The representative said in a stunned manner, everything else is proceeding smoothly. Zhong Yi nodded and said with a smile, that will do then. Great job. The representative said, but the foreign box office earnings will definitely take a, overseas box office earnings? What was hell was that? Zhong Yi rolled his eyes. No worries. If those people from Hollywood like to mess around, let them do it. There's no need to worry about the overseas showtimes. The representative said nervously, no need to worry? Boss Chien Jr. was speechless. In the media. Within the industry. In the entertainment circle. Everyone thought that Zhong Yi would flare up over this matter, but to everyone's surprise, he wasn't even bothered. 
when Zhang chose to make this movie, he had never even considered the foreign box office earnings. If there were any, so be it. Otherwise, no big deal. He didn't care about it at all. Perhaps some people in the industry thought that if Zhang Yi wanted to challenge Hollywood, it would be impossible to depend on just the domestic box office. The movie would definitely have to be distributed overseas as even many of Hollywood's blockbuster movies had a higher box office, earnings globally compared to their own North American market. But unbeknownst to them, Zhang Yi never thought of it this way. Ever since the beginning, he had excluded all of the box office sales of the other regions around the world. This was because he knew exactly the market this movie was aimed at. North America? Japan? India? The UK? If his goal was to take over these foreign markets and their box office earnings, he wouldn't have made Wolf Warrior 2, a production that was a Chinese movie through and through. All he cared about this time was the Chinese market. He only wanted to use the domestic box office earnings to beat Hollywood. Of course, Zhang Yi did not tell the distributor about this, nor did he reveal it to the media or the film's actors. Even if he had told them, they would think that Zhang Yi was crazy, although no one in this group of people felt that Zhang Yi was normal to begin with. In many of their eyes, Zhang Yi had always been crazy like that. If they thought he was crazy, then so be it. In a person's lifetime, one must do something crazy once. He was going to get crazy with a billion Chinese citizens this time. In the international scene. The news was spreading all over the world. A Hollywood movie gets blocked in China? Surprise! Commando 2 gets buried in China. Hollywood's Directors Guild protests. Zhang Yi's debut movie to play soon? Zhang Yi's new movie nearly fails to get distributed overseas. An overly confident challenge from China. Based on Zhang Yi's current international reputation, he still wasn't that famous. Originally, the news of Zhang Yi's new movie would not have gotten such a huge amount of international coverage. However, with Wilson's reputation, and Commando 2 being such a popular franchise, as well as Hollywood's backing, the competition helped to propel Wolf Warrior 2 into international attention as the media made comparisons between the two movies, on the web. There was the sound of ridicule everywhere. An American netizen, are they really trying to challenge us? An Indian netizen, that Chinese man must be cracking an international joke, right? A French netizen, a Chinese movie versus a Hollywood movie? There's no comparison at all. How can anyone compare these two movies? Isn't that as good as an insult? A Japanese netizen, it was Zhang Yi who tried to challenge them. A Pakistani netizen, no, it was Wilson who initiated the challenge. A UK netizen, no matter who provoked whom first, these two movies have gone to war. Commando 2 has lost its chance to screen in China, so there will be quite a big loss in the box office. Similarly, Wolf Warrior 2 has lost its chance to screen in the majority of the overseas markets and suffered even greater losses because of that. A Canadian netizen, Zhang Yi is at most an average international C-lister. Although his popularity isn't low, it isn't that high either, so how much could he possibly earn at the box office with a movie that he self-directed and acted in? Look at Commando 2, the two main leads are international A-listers, and there are also a few international B-list celebrities from Japan and the UK joining in as well. The overseas box office sales won't be too bad either. Together with Wilson's brand, heh, I would consider Wolf Warrior 2 to have one if they can even get 10% of the box office earnings of Commando 2. An American netizen, that's right, but you haven't considered the possibility of the two movies showing during the same period. If they are released at around the same time, Commando 2 will crush the Chinese movie based on its reputation and influence. That will make the difference between the two movies even more obvious. A Dutch netizen, what is Wolf Warrior 2 about? An Australian netizen, who knows? A German netizen, does anyone have a link for Wolf Warrior 1? I'm quite interested in watching it. A Korean netizen, there isn't a part 1. He shot the sequel right off the bat. The German netizen, huh? He made Wolf Warrior 2 first. A Pakistani netizen, how impressive, my Chinese bro. An American netizen, heh, I just want to see if the Chinese guy has the balls to release his movie at the same time as Commando 2. If he does so, I'll have to give it to him. Another American citizen, 
that's impossible. He wouldn't do that. A Canadian netizen, yeah, that Chinese guy can't be that stupid. Then quite a few Chinese netizens appeared. Is that so? Let's wait and see then. Haha, ha, see if he has the balls. The netizens from the various countries were a little startled. Only the Chinese netizens were smiling. This was because they knew Zhong Yi's temper very well. After so many years, how could they not know what kind of person Zhong Yi was and what his character was like? What kind of temper did Zhong Yi have? The more other people didn't think he would do something or have the courage to do so, the more this fellow would want and dare to do it. Soon after, the entire world blew up. As it turned out, the Chinese netizens were right. On this day, Commando 2 announced its global premiere date. It was going to premiere on the first of next month. Concurrently, Wolf Warrior 2 also announced its global premiere date. It was also scheduled for the first of next month. The media was exhilarated. The industry was dumbfounded. The public was stunned. The entire world's attention was now focused on these two movies. Two movies that had been hyped up before their release beyond anything prior were about to premiere around the world on the same day. Chapter 1640, Battle of the Premieres. On the first. It was the day of the premiere. The entire world's attention was on this. Today, a total of three Hollywood movies were being released. They were all big productions, and the one that attracted the most attention would have to be Commando 2. A global poll showed that it was the most anticipated Hollywood movie of the year with no others coming close. The pre-sales results. The early reviews. The attention from the moviegoers. All those metrics were going off the charts. America. Lines were already forming up at the entrance of the theater. It's still not time. I can't wait any longer. I heard that this movie is pretty good. Yeah, the media's early reviews rated it quite good. That's right, the most authoritative film rating site has given it a score of 7.1. For a Hollywood action movie, that's a good score. Japan. Have you bought tickets yet? I couldn't get any tickets for today's showing. I ended up booking tickets for tomorrow. I managed to get one, ha ha. There's a Japanese celebrity starring in it too, so I definitely have to watch it. Korea. The pre-sale tickets have already sold out? Wilson's appeal is still impressive. Looks like Commando 2's box office earnings are gonna explode. Yep, it might end up being the global box office earnings champion this year. Yeah, no other movies in the same period have anything on it. The UK. Chinatown. Commando 2 has been released first? I think it's due to the time zone differences that Wolf Warrior 2 hasn't been released yet. I just went to the cinema. Most of the sessions are showing Commando 2. Hi, even though Zhong Yi's new movie was said to be a global premiere, it's actually showing mainly in China. There's nothing that can be done about that. Our Chinese movies aren't popular internationally. India. Ha ha, let's go in now. They're playing the trailers, but it should start immediately. I'm so looking forward to watching it. It's a full house in the cinema. This shows the appeal of Hollywood movies. After today, Zhong Yi is gonna end up as a joke. In multiple countries. In many of the big theater chains. Moviegoers from around the world were entering theaters. Amid the enthusiastic atmosphere, Commando 2 premiered. Bang. Bang bang. Smash. The movie began with a battle. Pharaoh. Retreat. Retreat already. God damn it. The moviegoers were wearing 3D glasses and staring at the silver screen as characters they were familiar with appeared one by one. Emotion surged through the audience. This was the advantage of a sequel. After the first movie established a certain degree of popularity and fame, the second and third movies were much easier to make. Memories. The protagonists went their separate ways. The squad regrouped afterwards. The entirety of the movie which ran for two hours was bursting with a classic Hollywood flavor. When the first round of the global showings ended, the moviegoers were left wanting more as they walked out of the theaters. On the web. 
netizens from all over the world were discussing it. I just finished watching it. How did you find it? Pretty good. Yeah, it was a really fun watch. Wilson's films are getting much better. Ha ha ha, the tickets are really worth it. I recommend that everyone watch it. I thought it was all right. The plot is still the same, so I don't really recommend it. In reality, it was okay. But since it follows the same format as Commando, the moviegoers will find the experience a little lacking. However, I thought the VFX were really good. Yeah, the CGI was quite good. Although it was not as good as I expected, I can't deny that it was a good movie. I bet that the global box office rankings are gonna be dominated by Commando 2 this month. Some were calling it good, while others found it to be average. Everyone had a different opinion of the movie. Although the reviews were mixed, there was hardly anyone who rated this movie as terrible. For a Hollywood blockbuster, that was more than enough. On a movie rating site. Commando 2's rating saw some changes. 7.1, 7.0, 6.9, 6.8 In the end, the score stabilized only after dropping to around 6.5. Although the movie's rating had quietly fallen lower from before, it wasn't by much, and the trend was still considered a normal phenomenon. This was due to a limitation brought upon by the scale and number of moviegoers who reviewed the movie, leading to the score dropping lower than when it was reviewed during the early release sessions. Even so, 6.5 was a score above the commonly accepted standard. The Daily Global Box Office Real-Time Rankings With the hotly anticipated release of the Hollywood movies, the rankings chart was getting updated constantly. Real-time statistics, number 1, Commando 2, Box Office Earnings for million two hundred and fifty seven thousand seven hundred US dollars number two, Life of Jimmy, box office earnings, two million one hundred and eighty four thousand four hundred US dollars number three, despicable, box office earnings, one million nine hundred and eighty one thousand two hundred US dollars. There were a hundred movies on the global box office rankings, and the chart could only show that many of them. It was mainly dominated by Hollywood movies, with some British movies, some French movies, and some Japanese movies on it as well. Meanwhile, two of the top three movies had premiered globally today. The other movie was Life of Jimmy, which had been released last week and was the previous global box office leader until Commando 2 premiered. Of course, the day had not ended yet. There could still be some changes in the rankings until then. Wilson's Company At this moment, the film crew was together and everyone was cheering. First place. The reviews are still okay. We're assured of the weekend box office earnings champion. Ha 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 ha, this is great. Director Wilson, congratulations. You're going to exceed $500 million at the box office again. It's still hard to say. We've already earned over $4 million at the box office. In the span of this day, we should be able to reach $20 million in the North American region. Counting all the other regions, it should surpass $40 million, and that's still for the first day of release. It's just the premiere. Yeah, $500 million is definitely not going to be a problem. We can already celebrate it in advance. It's a pity we couldn't get the Chinese market, otherwise it would have been even higher. It won't be higher by much. Although it looks like there are a lot of people in China and their market is big, the box office there isn't actually that big so there's no need to care about it. Oh right, what's the update on that Chinese movie? Wolf Warrior 2. It's a joke. Haha, ha, why do you guys care about the Chinese movie? It's not that we care, but didn't it premiere on the same day as us? Our box office earnings are more or less known. All I'm curious about is the look on that Zhong Yi's face. He's probably regretting his decision. Our movie's premiere has already earned over $4 million at the box office in just two hours, how could he not be regretting it? Ha 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 ha. The box office earnings kept soaring. The reviews were coming in one after another. Commando 2 became very popular the moment it premiered. With the popularity of Commando 2, many of the other movies that were showing in the same period got overshadowed by it. This also led to many people around the world forgetting about Wolf Warrior 2. Can support us completed novel house in link below clip. Thank you for coming and love the sharing story.